What's up, y'all? It's TTC, aka the Thunder Conductor, and we back for another YouTube video and Twitch stream. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. You know how it go. And if you're on Twitch, make sure you follow and ring the bell. We do this once a week on uh, Twitch and twice a week on YouTube. So let's get straight into it. I got a question for y'all. What is your favorite OG commander? And when I say OG commander, I'm not talking like, nah, no, uh, no flimsy, like all this new school stuff, everything can do everything in the cat's pajamas in the back. I'm talking about the OGs. So I'm talking about Narset, Godo, Zer, things in the realm that really like started off this CDH format as we see it today. And even though I am a mono red player at heart, recently I met a very passionate Git Rod player who's actually here, I really think he may convince me that Git Rock may be the top of the food chain when it comes to OG Commander. So without any uh, without any delay, I'd like to introduce Devin, AKA Card Slinking Cajun. You there, brother? Yeah, I'm right here. Let's get it, let's get it, man. Talk to me, man, how are you feeling? And just give me a quick introduction. Like, how did you get into CDH? How did you get into the Git Rock muster? Just go ahead and let us all know, brother. So, uh, I've been playing CDH since about roughly 2017, about. Okay. Uh, I first got in as a senior in high school, and, you know, <laughs> like most people, just, you know, 60-card random stuff, all that goodness. Right, and, right, right. Uh, one of my friends had this really cool deck, and it was an Avacyn deck, and it was for Commander. I said, whoa. This is a really cool format. It's a really cool deck. And so that led me into getting my first commander deck, which was a uh, Sliver Overlord. Oh. And so, you know, just slivers doing big, dumb things, just having, having a good time. And I was playing for a little while. But then over at my local game store, I uh, met this one of my friends named Stu. Mm. And he was very, very, very more passionate. <laughs> <laughs> about Rock monster and he says hey guys you gotta face me with this deck just real quick and i was like oh okay what's we'll, we'll see what's up and <laughs> first i said real quick and see and you know commander we're like okay yeah whatever and he says if i don't win by turn four you know i'll just scoop up right now <laughs> and I'm like, oh. what the fuck? yeah i'm like oh easy yeah no problem yeah 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 and so i saw the command yeah, i saw the get rock monster and i was like oh okay you know this you, this is a pretty bad card. You, you sack lands, you know, that's that's terrible. Right, so right, right. Long, turn three annihilates us. Just no. me and my friend to the ground. <laughs> We're like, whoa. Oh my gosh. And he was, and I'm, I'm only been playing commander, you know, so all I'm used to is just first off slivers. Right, right, and, right. And you know, the sliver combos i don't know anything i don't know about good interaction mm -hmm. no good you know c e d h cards but right. yeah he just tore us up i was like Man. wow that was really cool and complicated and loops and it was awesome and so after that uh i went back home and i started looking up the git rock monster and i was yeah. like man maybe this is maybe this is something i want to look into exactly and then the more yeah. i started looking into it i was like wow this it's actually a really, really cool deck. And so at that right. point I was hooked. Wow. And slowly built, you know, got enough uh, money to build, get Rock Monster to a good, you know, comfortable, competitive point. Exactly. And then slowly past that, I got more comfortable with the loops and everything. Yeah. And, you know, eventually had the whole deck filled out, went to a few local tournaments, won a few with them, and uh, that carried all from there man so first of all i love the story i what i love most about your story is that you had like you had your homeboys with you where it wasn't this animosity of like oh you're trying to pup stop his nose like oh my gosh that's the coolest <laughs> thing on the planet like wait what the heck <laughs> you just beat us on turn three i want to do that exactly. and so i love that like you just with your boys and you all like slowly grew together not just in skill level but in power level so i just want to say first of all i love that and next i actually wanted to also ask like you brought up some tournament experience with this deck like are there any recent tournaments you've experienced uh where you had good records or any like best stories of your tournament experience when it comes to playing with the gear rock commander so 
a while back when I was playing a lot more CDH when we were, me and my friends were just starting, uh, yeah, that we're going about probably once a week at just our LGS and we would do pretty well. Mm. I think out of that, I was also playing you know, another deck also at the time and so I go back and forth. I did primarily play the Git Rock Monster. I think right. I probably won out of our pods probably about four or five times, which is I don't. I don't think it's pretty. That's not too bad for the get rock. Monster. That's not too bad. So these are these are four or five times taken taken home the first place for the whole tournament. Well, this is only only for the pod. So the old old style commander tournaments at our LGS oh. was you would all go in, and they would divvy out the pods, um, and it was pretty loose. So you sometimes you had a three, and sometimes you had a a five okay. it was real loose back then yeah <laughs> this is before <laughs> all the debacles and the online c days tournaments and all the other shenanigans oh yeah this was 2018 go to your game store and you get two imaginary packs and then if someone beats you they get one of your pack and you go home with at least one pack Hi. wow <laughs> man i love it go ahead go ahead so you so taking home four to five of these pods and so it's, it can, it really pr has proven its um, its its power level at this point. And so the thing I want to know is, unfortunately, we don't get to see the Get Rock Monster as much in like current like the current CDH meta. And I wanted to ask you like, why do you, like how have you been feeling like being like a Get Rock Monster player in twenty twenty four? So, uh, Jurg Monster near dear to my heart love your art monster mm -hmm. but around what was it 2018 2019 in that era um a special little card protein hulk got unbanned in <laughs> cdh and immediately took the form out by storm like everyone was playing just flash hulk flash hulk was everywhere N Najila, thracios timna mm -hmm. you name any commander that could hold blue green it had flash hulk in it yeah no, 100%. And, and it was the the old style flash hulk where it was you get um the uh you reanimate the angel's glory rise bring back your hapless research your sack it draw card with a lab man in play it was <laughs> clunky and terrible but it got results yeah 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 100 so, this two mana combo like it was the combo of all combos mm -hmm. so and the the hard part about that is that if someone flash the best response to a flash is your own flash and flash on top of them. Right. So it right. was just two mana win the game anytime. And you can do it, you know, as early as turn zero. Right. And it was absurd. Mm. And so trying to be in that format with the Gitrog monster, you know, I need to, you know, there are turn one wins, but more likely it's going to be turn three, turn four. I have to get the Gitrog monster, right. I have to set up a few things, get it going, mm. and so it really got pushed, pushed out. Ah, so, I hear you. I hear you. Just like all of us, we all we all played Flash Hulk. We played it to death. And then <laughs> it got banned. And then they banned a few more cards. After that, they banned um, Hole Breacher. Oh yeah, I and, that's another one I've heard the horror stories. <laughs> man, it was. I I think now it'd be better because. There's a lot of card draw. Right, right, exactly. We gotta punish the card draw. Look now. Exactly. Maybe it's a little too oppressive because you know treasure, treasure is a lot, a lot of value. But mm -hmm. but all that. So uh, they made some bands and they banned um, Golos. And I was like, ah, maybe we should, we should give CDH a break. Mm -hmm. And then I played Modern for a bit. But okay. that was, Flash definitely put a huge stop on the Get Rock Monster. Mm, and you believe okay. like that was probably like right when that flash band came out that's when the get rock monster and a lot of other notable decks got pushed out the way and maybe never had the chance to fully come back into the light you know if if that's what i'm feeling right right because it's it's very hard to be a um fluent turbo to late game combo uh combo deck right and not be in blue to support or protect yourself you only you know you have green you have veil of summer uh autumn's veil those kind of things but it's really hard to actually present a threat of winning whenever you don't have the colors to really support that so that's yeah. another thing too no that that's a hundred percent 
Yeah. Now, like that is actually something I've been experiencing. Like, uh, like a lot of people know my favorite deck in the world is Reunion Fire Dancer, but I've been having a lot of fun playing Marnie's Calgar because, like, having white for silence effects and blue for counter magic, and then black for even tutoring. You know, granted, Get Rock Muster does have that tutor package, but that we'll end up talking about. But it's just always tough not having blue just in general. You know, maybe if you have right. white, like you can get away with. Oh, at least I have some silence effects here and there. But then losing blue, it just really, you gotta, you just gotta have something special. You know what I'm saying? So we'll get to that something special in a sec. But I really also, I want to ask you, like, so we know now you love Get Rock Monster. We, it's all the cool stuff. This is the best OG deck ever. We gonna, we gonna prove it in a second. Well, let's talk about what the Get Rock Monster to uh, get what the Get Rock Monster does and talk to us, brother. All right, so the Get Rock Monster is a five mana six six three black and a green death touch with three very important lines of text mm. one being at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice the get rock monster unless you sacrifice a land mm -hmm. second you may play an additional land on each of your turns and the most important whenever one or more lands would go into your graveyard from anywhere draw a card mm so face value printed it's supposed to be this you know five mana big dumb thing death touch that allows you to draw two cards a turn but right. slowly your lands wither away until you can't support them anymore right exactly Barely. so the gitrog monster really really likes to abuse that land enter the graveyard draw a card exactly okay i hear that i hear that and and so there is a funny little land from Future Sight called Dakmore Salvage. Mm. And it is a land that enters the battlefield tapped and tap for a black, but also has Dredge 2. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm seeing, I'm seeing something. So if you can get Dakmore Salvage into the graveyard, you'll have a draw trigger from the Gitrog monster. But okay. you can also just replace that draw trigger with a dredge trigger and put Dakmore back to your hand and mill two cards simultaneously. Mm. And then just back in your hand. Just, just a cool little value kind of thing. Got you, got you, got you. 100%. Okay. And then, so, yeah, go ahead, brother. And the very last thing is to really, really abuse this, the, the where the combo really starts to come together is you have these permanents creatures really that say this card a card do whatever any effect mm. and with this now we can create this loop of i take dakmore salvage with a get rock monster and a discard outlet if you may on the field mm -hmm. so dakmore goes to the graveyard i will put a draw trigger on the stack i will resolve it by dredging two and putting dakmore back to my hand mm -hmm. and then now i ended this mini loop of Dakmore's in my hand, and two cards are in the graveyard. And also, if any of those two cards is another land, I get to draw a card again. Mm. Got you, got you. And you're basically saying that you can always, even if you don't hit a land, you can always just re-discard the Dakmore Salvage, and it's basically, well, what, is this instant, infinite, or how yeah like is it infinite or uh is it like i know one of the 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 these this uh the claims of fame to kid rock monster is how complex this deck is when it comes to doing the combo and so is it infinite or is it more just is, is it so, semi-infinite or how's that that's the fun part <laughs> so the initial part of the deck technically is non-deterministic but not in the way that like, you know, the four horsemen where you tap Mesmeric Orb and untap it with, um, uh, or you tap the uh, Basalt Monolith and Mesmeric Orb and like mill yourself and do that whole long thing. But this one, this one is more, it, it will happen. Got you. 100%. And once you're past that one part, then, which we'll go over in a minute, once you're past the hardest part of the deck, which is drawing your whole deck mm. everything you do after that is deterministic got you and it 
you can definitely do a loop and it's it's fully legal and all that it's just the hardest part is getting your whole graveyard and deck into your hand and then you can go from there and got do a, a full win attempt with loops and then then you're good you're solid got you and so i want to touch on some things but before we do that if you're looking for more ways to support the show we have a plethora of ways first of all if you just like subscribe and ring the bell that just that's that's me that's enough to say thank you to me but we also have a lot of other ways to support the show first of all i'm wearing some of my thunder conductor merch it is my amazing uh way to just you know give y'all some drip and some swag to wear it is really comfortable it looks good we got everything from the tc classic design the tc blackout and the tc whiteout it is super comfortable it's everything you need and i can't I ain't gonna copy this is my favorite piece of clothing that, nah, uh, clothing that I wear now. We also got a Thunder Conductors Proxy. This is my way to increase access to this amazing format that we call CDH. We have our premium paperback and our deluxe card stock line. So check out link in the bio. Not to mention, if you say an AT, like I don't want the cards, but I just wanna get to know you and the community you're building. Check us out on Discord, link in the bio. But also, we also have a deeper level to the Discord and other ways to get perks and whatever not if you check us out on Patreon. So Patreon, you can get everything South shoutouts on our streams. You can get exclusive, exclusive Q and A's. Uh, we can also get your chance to get your deck checked out right here on the stream. And lastly, if you say a T, I don't want no Patreon, no proxies, no merch. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Just link in the bio, buy me a coffee. It keeps me up and keeps the lights on. And with that said, we're going to get deeper in this because actually before we get into the win cons, I really, brother, we have some questions in chat. And so I feel like we're going to have to diverge from the path. We have some, we we need, I like, I ain't go cap. Look, we have some questions because it seems like this, people are really pr passionate about this deck. We have the right people here. First one is <laughs> we want, the, we have a question from uh, another Mo MTG saying, that uh do you run chain of mephistopheles and because d mage brought up because something about a fairy macabre are you familiar with this and what they're referring to oh oh fairy macabre i love fairy macabre okay. so much <laughs> <laughs> thank you for correcting me on the pronunciation pronunciation as well so oh, no, you, i did the exact same thing <laughs> it, it same in so yeah, fair, it's, so, it's one of those funny cards that when it gets you, you go, what's a fairy macabre? And it's already too late. It already is <laughs> thing, and you're probably, you got hosed for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk so talk to us about, so talk to us about this fairy uh, macabre. Like, what is the, what is this boogeyman but that really hurts the Get Rock monster? So, yes. Um, I do not run Chains of Mephistopheles in this current build. Now, um, of course, chains being two main enchantments, um, if you draw the card, except for the first card you draw each turn, you instead discard a card instead, and then mm. draw. I believe that's the roughly the text is you discard, then draw, so you kind of like filter your hand, and you can actually combo off with Chains of Mephistopheles and the Dakmore Salvage. The right. problem with it is that um, when we go into the combo, we can see that this one's very instant speed, it's very well controlled mm. and you can you there'll be a point whenever you have infinite draw triggers on the stack and your library's empty and to do some loops to not die and this one it's very slow it's also another way of winning that we go over as well yes but yes, it's yes. very uh put the draw trigger discard the deck more and then um mill two cards put it back to your hand and like a very slow way of doing it and it's it's truly it's non-deterministic way of winning gotcha. um, i have seen people do it though and it can be done <laughs> and it's definitely really really good i think currently in this meta especially with a lot of mid-range and card mm -hmm. draw but fairy macabre yes yeah fairy macabre well you brought it up the man let's okay wait, wait, go ahead brother yeah you, well you brought it up uh let's let's talk about win guns how does this deck win you brought up the dak more salvage and the discard outlet but just go ahead and go deep into the win cons brother so we see that there is this funny little loop where i can discard dak more salvage mm -hmm. get a draw trigger dredge two, put it back to my hand and then mill two, and then maybe draw a card and that's what we you've seen so far right so what this deck can do and what it is going to do is you're going to take Dakmore Salvage, mm -hmm. you're going to discard it, 
put a draw trigger on the stack. You're going to resolve it. Okay. And you're going to mill two cards. Okay. If one of those cards is a land, you put a draw trigger on the stack. Because since you do the, the way dredge works, is that that one goes back to your hand and you mill two at the same time. So that one's back in your hand. Mm. And then the draw goes on the stack. Mm, in gotcha. response, you can discard that more again, put another on dredge trigger or a draw trigger on the stack, and then dredge two, put it back to your hand, and if there's another draw, tr another land that enters the graveyard, you get another draw trigger on the stack. Mm. And so slowly, not guaranteed every time, but you can go through and start discarding deck more salad and putting a draw trigger on the stack. And you know, of course, eventually, you know, you have no more deck. You can't do this anymore, and you can right. only dredge right, right. the number of cards that are in your deck. Mm. So that is why we run Hoslik, Butcher of Truth, and Ulamog, the Infinite Geyer. So eventually, we'll have some number of draw triggers on the stack, and we will dredge over a Kozilek, and then now we have this big number of draw triggers on the stack, and a shuffle trigger on top. Right. And since it resolves the way it does, you can that will go back to your hand, and then you shuffle your whole graveyard back to your library, and then you start the loop all over again. Okay. And so now you have this way of discarding deck more, go through your deck, and that's where I said where they say it's non-deterministic. Mm. This loop is you will always you will always get the shuffle <laughs> because you will always at least hit one land. And if not, you will shuffle and do it again. And so some some people will try to say, like, oh, you can uh, you discard your deck more and then hit a Titan and not get a draw, draw trigger and then do it again, another, another Titan, do it again, and do that, you know, infinitely times. And you have a higher probability of getting struck by lightning in your house than hitting <laughs> that infinite time. Is what I tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll always get at least one. And if you can get at least one, then you know you can build from that. And most people still make you go through the combo quite a bit. Right, right, and right. Typically after like, you know, the you know, the 70th draw trigger or you're doing all of that, they kind of see the writing and they go, okay. Because there's a time, there's a there's a window to interact with it. Mm. And the longer you let Gitrock do its thing, the faster that window closes. Got you, got so, you, got you. Eventually, the way I find it safest is you slowly uh, resolve these draw triggers in real time mm -hmm. and actually draw your deck out gotcha. because there's a good point about interaction that is very important mm. and that plays a big part of it why this combo is so resilient it's gotcha. really good at that okay so slowly you will uh dredge deck more discard it get a draw draw the card and eventually you'll have no library or very little mm -hmm. and you'll have your whole deck and your whole graveyard in your hand and you'll have uh, either one or zero draw triggers on the stack and then you can do the actual loops that are deterministic right 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 you can take you know any number of lands in your hand because you have your whole deck you can discard you know four lands put four draw triggers on the stack mm. discard one of the titans and then you're going to shuffle it all into your new deck which is five cards <laughs> right 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 and now you're going to discard deck more, okay. mill two, and then now, because you have one Titan in all lands, now it's guaranteed you will always mill over at least one land. Mm. So now you can say, I will put four billion draw triggers on the stack. Got you, got or you, got you. If you need more draw triggers, because this deck has to go back and forth between not having draw triggers and having draw triggers on the stack. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. So. This is the loop we can do to create infinite draw triggers. Got you. And vice versa, uh, we can discard a Titan, shuffle it into a one card library, which is the Titan, mm -hmm. draw that Titan, and then discard it, put it back in, shuffle it. And this is how we can lose all of our draw triggers and not die. And these are two very important loops because mm. I've seen and heard many people, they're doing their combo and they get flustered and they say, I'm going to put a uh, hundred draw triggers on the stack and we'll resolve them one by one and they do that and they lose the game right and so it's really important to control your draw triggers mm. so 
Barely. Now that we have a way to make equipment or, you know, a big number of draw triggers and a way to lose all of our draw triggers, now we get into the way of how we win the game. Okay, okay, okay. And I, I so, love what, I, if I could just pause for a second, I, I love the thought process that went through that process of just like, I'm not running board upon the win. So I don't know what y'all think I'm about to do instant speed on the top of the stack. Like I could do a lot of crazy stuff, but he said controlling the draw triggers, making sure you don't go too deep or too light on your draws and making sure you can leverage your shuffle tights. But man, keep going. You're doing, this is amazing. Keep going, brother, keep going. <laughs> so you need at least one black mana. And I okay. think some people will, will see what's coming and you will take your one black mana. It could be from a rock, a land, anything. Mm -hmm. And in the deck, we have a dark ritual okay. or cabal ritual if you have extra mana okay. and you make three mana. Okay. So then you have um, dark ritual and you can make three mana. That goes to the graveyard. Or better yet, before we do that, say we have dark ritual in hand and one black mana, but now we need a way to make the mana in a very controlled way and not lose and mm. make it recurring in a loop so then we can you know uh, have a start of the loop end of the loop and then everyone everything's all everyone's all happy right so we do our infinite draw trigger trick okay we put some lands in with a titan mill over put infinite you know hundred thousand draw triggers on the stack right right so now right, i have a right. hundred thousand draw triggers on the stack and my library and my deck is empty mm -hmm. in response to me drawing and dying I'm going to play a black mana, play Dark Ritual. Okay. I'm going to go to the graveyard. I have three black mana. I mm. will discard a Titan. Okay. I'll put a shuffle trigger on top of that. Mm. Then we'll get shuffle. I will draw one, draw two. In response to the third one that kills me, I'll play this Dark Ritual I just got to my hand. Mm. Let it go to the graveyard. Discard the Titan, put it back, draw, draw, and then we have this loop of infinite black mana this way. Okay. Okay. All okay. In, okay. In the, you're flirting on the edge of death the whole time. <laughs> okay. And so now we have, you know, infinite black mana. And okay. Infinite draw triggers in the deck. 100%. And so the one of the best um, inclusions of this deck is also the one card that also really hurts the deck, Orcish Bowmasters. It yeah. is perfect win con. You can now do the exact same loop with two other cards, and it's Orcish Bowmasters oh. and Culling the Weak. So you can oh, flash in your bowmasters for the ETP. Deal one damage to someone. Got gotcha. Calling the weak. Put them both in the graveyard. Put a titan in the graveyard. Put all three cards into your new library of titan bowmasters. Calling the weak. Right. Draw three cards. In response to that trigger that's about to kill you, flash in bowmasters. Calling the weak. Deal ping one to someone. Rinse and repeat. The whole table's dead. <laughs> wow. Now, brother, the Orcish Bowmass is actually a newer card. So, it ha like, how is um, Get Rock Monster finishing off the table before the Orcish Bowmasters? Oh, I am glad you asked. It is a terrible, clunky loop. And it <laughs> okay. was near and dear to my heart. I love this loop so much, but it was not good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, talk to me. Well, first, I do want to acknowledge I do love the integration and how you all have leveraged Orcus Bowmasters to serve you. Of course, it hurts this loop because you can't draw your life, your library infinitely with the Bowmasters out, but you all have made your weakness your strength. And so I want to first acknowledge say that and that and say I love that. But now on the old loop, how, how are we finishing off pre Bowmasters or say if our Bowmasters got Swords of Plow shared earlier in the game? So back in 2017, there were all kinds of ways to that gay rock players would do this. Um, my friend Stu, who I talked about, who showed me the deck, his favorite was Squaw Line, which is not a good card. It X and a green uh, that deals damage to everybody, and he can control it, and it's it's not a good card. Okay, okay. <laughs> he, he admits it. He, it's his little his little tagline of killing everyone. Right, right, and right. Okay, okay. <laughs> normally, you know, of course, you play CDH, you want to fill your deck with cards that impact the game and it's a bonus if those cards combo together but they also impact the game you don't want to fill your cards with like uh, a combo piece that does nothing on its own it's only good for one thing and it's part of another combo so so people don't run demonic consultation just because they feel like the card is too bad in some ways and so in the old old days 
we used to run Rift Sweeper, mm. which is a creature that is, when it enters the battlefield, choose target face up, choose target card that's face up that's been removed from the game. Its owner shovels it into his or her library. Got you. So, this was my use is my old um, safe way of getting Dakmore back. Back when there's a lot more graveyard hates and yeah, uh, uh, people would um, food chain is really popular. Mm, and so you. there's a card called Extract that you can play on someone where it's like they look through your deck, find a card and remove it from play. Yeah. So that's yeah. happened to me a few times in the old days. Yeah. And so yeah, this yeah. is kind of like my response to it to get Dakmore back, but also it's really good. At getting your own cards back that you intentionally put in exile mm. like an elvish spirit guide that got you made mana with it got you got so, you got oh you. man oh, i forgot about this line oh it's <laughs> so good so in the deck we also used to run necromancy mm -hmm. the three mana flash enchantment okay yep and you would make infinite black mana the exact same way I just told you, with mm -hmm. just dark rituals and putting drop trigger on the stack. Mm -hmm. But there's no really good way to kill your opponents with infinite black mana, instant speed that cluttered the deck. Got you, got you, got so, you. The way you would really finish our opponent is you need infinite green mana, which we have a better way of doing it now. Mm -hmm. uh, the best ways with Guy's Cradle and a whole other loop that we'll go into for the modern combo, but I didn't have Guy's Cradle. And that was back when proxies were not as not as a they were pretty frowned upon back then so right I had, to, I had to get clever with it right. and so this is what someone else found and it's you can exile elvish spirit guide from your hand because you draw your whole deck got you and that goes into exile right then without one uh green mana you net that okay you have risk reaper in your hand you discard okay. the Rift Sweeper to the graveyard. Okay. You play Necromancy and you put it into play. ETB trigger, you get Rift Sweeper, and then you get Elvish Spirit Guide from Exile back to your one card deck. Mm. And then you resolve a draw trigger and then put it into your hand. But now you have this Rift Sweeper. So you had to, you know, play a piece of removal, um, a dismember, a um I think we've run Dismember back in the day, but is any piece of black right. removal, your infinite black mana to get rid right. of your Rift Sweeper, put it back in the graveyard. Necromancy goes back in the graveyard. Then you discard a Titan, mm. put that into the graveyard, that gets shuffled up, you draw, resolve your draw triggers, and then boom. You have one green mana, Yeah. and you have your Elder Spirit Guide back in your hand. Yeah. It's funny you brought so up about... Really my apologies for cutting you off, brother. It's so funny that you brought up having that removal for the Rift Sweeper. We had another uh, Mo MTG saying, I, uh, he said, I had a funny game with Rift Sweeper where the dude deflecting swat my Rift Sweeper and I had to snuff out my own Rift Sweeper to draw it again just so he could get... Uh, so I just so I can he could get back his own Lotus Petal. So obviously these play patterns are powerful because more multiple people in the community are using it. But keep going, bro. That was uh, funny to me, brother. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And, yes. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the, you can just calling the week your own Rift Sweeper, and that also gets rid of the enchantment. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's 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 loops to get rid of your Rift Sweeper, but that's how you made infinite green mana. Got you. 100%. And then you have infinite green, infinite black mana. You okay. have all this mana. All right. And there was my favorite card in the whole deck. I admit it was not good, but it's a colorless land called Sun Scorched Desert. Oh, like, okay. Now oh, yeah. this all makes sense. <laughs> it's you never want a colorless land that does, you know, yeah, nothing this to the, your deck. Yeah, this, uh, the land that does a damage. Does one damage to any target. <laughs> it's... What? It actually might be your target opponent. Target opponent loses one life or deals one damage to target opponent, but yeah. Right, the right, land, right, right, right. ETB is doing one damage to an opponent. Mm -hmm. And so, you have infinite green mana now, and you have at least one land in play. So now you're going to play prop rotation. Mm. And if it's, uh, if it's already in your hand or not in a play, you can cast the crop rotation, sack a land, and then in response, you can discard, you know, the uh central desert sun scorch desert and a titan and that shovel goes on top of the search 
or just do the yeah the sun scorch uh crop rotation gets mm. shuffled and have a yep. deck of sun scorched and fossilic mm. then you resolve crop rotation search in get the sun scorched etb deal one resolve a draw trigger draw Kozilek, crop rotations in the graveyard now so then you can discard Kozilek again Reshuffle. get crop rotation and Kozilek back into the deck draw right. both and so now you can just sack the sunscore <laughs> desert <the> crop rotation <laughs> in response put it back in the deck search for it again put it in the play oh my and gosh <laughs> We got deep major chat said, "Oof, my brain." Oh my gosh, man, these, these are okay, okay. I don't want to cut you off. You're in your flow state, brother. Go ahead, bro. Oh no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, man, I'm curious to know who the heck thought about these compost. I'm like, that's just so. I'm so curious and understanding, like the like. I love that. I'm so happy for you all that you all have Orcus Boatmasters now. But yes, this it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah man but like i can see the genius behind what you all are doing like making it like i'm gonna draw my whole deck make infinite black mana make infinite green mana then we will leverage uh the if we just to touch bases on what we the rifts we were gonna leverage the rip sweeper to make infinite green mana to start crop rotation our sun scorch desert to do infinite pings to target players which we are opponent and so good okay all right Keep going, brother. We good. So, is there? It was there any other parts of that combo, or is pretty much once you make the infinite, the uh, infinite crop rotations for infinite sun scorched deserts, was that pretty much everything? That that was pretty much the that was the main win, really. And uh, in my meta at my local game store, um, that's what's great about it is that once a lot of people see the combo and know about it, mm. once you have the get rug monster, a discard outlet deck more salvage in hand and you flash it and you have mana up they will they'll just concede now because they <laughs> they know you know the combo right they know right, that right. you know how to go around interaction and right yeah. they'll probably play out the first couple of discards which we'll, we can definitely go into it's my one of the best parts of the whole deck yes. but once they like they run interaction they go okay he knows what he's doing and they'll still <laughs> concede and <laughs> it's, it's all just really good yeah 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 man i feel that brother dang okay so you so with that said we have and and is the sun scorched desert a, a combo we an outlet we still use or is it own do we only use orcish bowmaster as our current outlet oh right now it's definitely the orcish bowmasters and actually um so another fun thing mm -hmm. is that that is definitely our main win okay but of course uh what good came from all the ring for the orcish bowmaster is also the one ring gotcha and what's a sticky situation is sometimes i can win but a player cast the one ring and now i can't target them anymore right 100 percent, yeah and so it's like ooh. so that i had to, I had to go in the tank for that one. i was like man I, I need a way to win to kill yeah with uh with someone with the one ring in play exactly so i did some digging and I found this one person on YouTube, and he is e equally, if not more, way more brilliant than I. Because he found this very complicated loop, mm. and it's it's wonderful. Okay, okay. So, you have one of your mana dorks. Mm -hmm. You have Deathrite Shaman, which, on top of making mana dork, can also drain your opponent. You can make him lose life, or you can gain some life. Oh, very true. Okay. And so we have that ability. And say, like, okay, it's cool. And then Desert Shaman says, each opponent loses two lives. So we're, we already have a way, we already have an outlet of getting around the one ring. But now we need to activate it infinite times, which green, green, black isn't very good at that. Right. Except we have one of the best tutors that coincidentally gives haste when X is above 10. Oh shit! <laughs> Finale of devastation. No, I was oh, yeah. just gonna ask, how did you give it haste? That's so this fucking one, brilliant. <laughs> it's dope. It's not instant speed, but with the controlling of your draw triggers, you don't have to go at instant speed and you know being in threat of uh, losing to draw triggers. 
So that is the one downside. There's no way My. to do this at like someone's end step to really get them with the one ring. But on your main phase, by controlling your draw triggers, right, and and so you y'all can you can probably see what's going to happen here is you put in you uh, play the Desperate Shaman. Mm -hmm. You play the finale for at least ten. You now have a hasty, you know, it's big, so you can swing at someone if you like, or you can put a mana into it, tap it, exile one of your own instant sorties that you don't need anymore, mm -hmm. and deal two damage to each opponent. Mm -hmm. And then you find a way with your infinite black mana to sacrifice it, put some titans in the graveyard, draw both those cards again, play them again, mm -hmm. give it haste, boom. You it found a way to go around the one ring. <laughs> First of all, so many things are going through my head. The first thing is, if you all aren't aware, I am a big proponent of ever since the printing of the One Ring. Not only is it, in my opinion, the best draw engine we have in the format, but it's also a thing where it's like, hey, yo, we have to be able to win through it. Because especially like um, I bring up Rionia, for example, that wins through combat damage with like Combat Celebrant or Bloodthirster. If we didn't, if someone has the One Ring and they're like a TNK player or one of, uh, another powerful deck, we're just left out and we kill two players and we have one player left. So I absolutely love that you all found a way to navigate the one race protection. So first of all, that's fucking amazing. My second question is, my second question was going to be, uh, how, like you need at least, I mean, like I'm sure everyone loses a few life naturally during the game with fetch lanes or whatever not, but I'm guessing you need at least 20 instant or sorceries. Do you usually find that you're able to just get that from your own deck or do you leverage your opponent's graveyards or what plan do you usually use to navigate that death right shaman loop and make sure you can uh, fully finish off the rest of the table? That is a great question. And so you can you can definitely, of course, leverage your opponent's graveyard first. You exile all the rest of sorceries. You know, you can't target the wandering opponent, but you can you can get the rest of theirs. Right. But in the deck alone, if you're comboing off and no no one has any interaction, the only interaction is the one person going, I have the one ring, <laughs> try to kill me. Right, right, right. And that's their only out. Right. So then it's very comfortable. Then you're like, okay, so I just, I'm winning right now. Right. So as long as you just have 20 instant sorceries in your own graveyard, just eat them all up. You know, you're, you don't need your tutors anymore. You can get whatever card you want. So we have like a bunch of removal spells, uh, tutors, protection, mm. all that kind of stuff. You just put 20 in your graveyard, keep doing the same thing, and then two them down. And normally your opponents aren't at 40 fully. They're like more like 31. Yeah, or so, yeah, so. yeah. We're talking like 25 to 30, 30 some life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense, man. So I, I never found myself, especially if they have the one ring, like if they cast it, um, or they copied it and they already lost some life in some way to another one ring or just kind of stuff like that weird weird things happen in cedh exactly exactly <laughs> yeah i i love that so at this point now we've talked about the orcish bow master as an outlet and we've also talked about the death right shaman as an outlet of use leveraging infinite green and black mana the get rocks monsters draw ability are shuffle titans and a discard outlet and most importantly the Dakmore salvage, Dakmore salvage in order to just loop this infinite meta, infinite discard, infinite, all these things just to kill the table. So my question is, is there any other win cons in this deck that are notable um, to the Git Rock Monster? So it hasn't happened yet. Uh, you can kind of threaten this in a way. Right. So of course you make infinite mana, Mm -hmm. or and you can draw your whole deck and you can play any card any number of times let's say you know worst comes to worst you lost you know your orcish bow masters you lost uh your death right shaman the people are tuned in they know what your deck can do <laughs> and they got rid of all that stuff and one thing right. you can always do of course is just play some flyers that you have you have, you have birds of paradise one of the discard outlets is called unis prowler uh you have putrid imp and you have other cards that just are just creatures and then you oh. just play finale for, for i was just I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that yeah yeah that, that is it, i just felt the opinion of like duh like if all if all push comes to shove just finale infinitely kill the table oh man and I, if, if you, you want have, you know, 
the best part, my favorite part, is that uh, even if the creatures have indestructible, you know, the biggest indestructible thing you think of, I can think of normally, that's in CDH, is maybe Cauldra. If they even, if anyone's even playing Cauldra. No one's playing this. But you run no. Dismember. <laughs> so you're, you have Dismembers, you have uh, Assassin's Trophies, mm -hmm. you, uh, Abrupt Decays. So you're you can kill all of their creatures. Yeah. So no one can possibly block you. And if you want to put, you know, insult to injury, assassin's trophy, all their lands. They have no permits in play. Exactly. And just fully swing out of them. Hundred percent. Just a, with that assassin's trophy loop, you just lock them out the game. And I love this. If you all are not already aware, finale of devastation is one of the most popular win cons for a lot of green based decks, where it says search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with mana value X or less, and put it into your into onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle. If X is ten or more creatures you can control, get plus X plus X and gain haste until end the end of the turn. So with all these creatures, if I'm looking in the the deck here, we have 22 creatures. You have more, <laughs> including 23 with the Gate Rob Monster, in order to make infinite, uh, infinitely large creatures. And just along with the flyers, you'll just be fine. I love that, brother. Okay. All right. So, with that being said, um, I know a question that is going to end up a last question that comes up about the finale combo is what, uh, what people will end up experiencing is if they discard, if they go to their cleanup step to win through discarding and is is the finale combo only viable if you do the loop in your first main phase or is there a way to like, is it just, are we purely just doing the, uh, what is it, Assassin's Trophy loops to lock people out to get back to our turn or what are we doing in those situations where we're using our discard step as our cleanup? Yes, so, a few things you can do uh the infinite black and infinite green mana are instant speed so you can do those whenever whatever uh with finale it has it has sorcery so it has to be sorcery speed unfortunately right so one thing you could do is say you just for some reason you cannot win right now it's just not going to happen you have the mana you have you know infinite resources and you have your whole deck but you just can't close the game right now so what you can do is, you know, stall for a turn, and you can, you know, Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay, all your opponent's permanents. Gotcha. 100%, so 100%. make it to where they have to have, you know, their hand has to have something really, really good. <laughs> land, in order land, to stop you. land, Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, Mana Crypt, Thassa's Tainted Pact, all that in the hand. <laughs> we gotta and have all that. They're going to something, something really good to get them out of this. And right, normally, right, right. Uh, you, if you say, you know, that's one thing I've done before is uh, something happened one game and I lost my win con. And so I was in the loop and I said, I'm just going to destroy everyone's permanence and I'm just going to beat you for six. This is before finale was made. And so I'm just going to beat you for six oh, until you're all dead. And that was good enough for them. They said, that sounds miserable and I do not want to play that <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Like, uh, we have um, Pie, Pie Overlord in the chat. First of all, what's up, brother? It's great to see you. And he said, how is the deck looking? Can never wrap my hand around it. Well, I'm not going to lie, brother. I, I I am thankful that we have Devin here with us, our local <laughs> Get Rock Buster um, expert here, because he's expertly really broken the deck down from everything from using the Death Shaman, um, Death Right Shaman to win through the One Ring, also leveraging the Orcish Bull Masters of a print from 2023's Lord of the Rings sets to do infinite pings to our opponents, making infinitely a large orc army that really doesn't matter. You're just pinging them infinitely. Also talking about the pre Bowmaster when cons using the, uh, if I can remember correctly, I'm trying to test myself now, the Sun Scorched Desert in order That's to get it. there. <laughs> Uh, Leveren Sun Scorched Desert and a really cool creature I actually never saw before called Rift Sweeper, uh, looping this to make infinite black and infinite green mana, then using crop rotation in order to infinitely loop the Sun Scorched Desert. And so, and then of course, uh, the last win con we talked about was Finale of Devastation. Can't leave home without it. Not just is it a tutor and graveyard recursion, it's also a way to pump your flyers infinitely large and just kill the table. So, um we have a pi says i'm lost on how you make the infinite mana dark ritual loops i understand but where does the green come from uh 
Pi, can you, uh, uh, Devin, could you quickly touch on one more time how we convert the black mana into green mana? Yes, and the one I discussed before, that was the, the old way of making infinite green mana. Okay. So the main way still today, the modern way, is just make infinite black mana and do bow master stuff, and you, you don't need green. Okay. But you can make infinite green still with this deck. And so now what you're going to do is... Uh, now that people and uh, stores are more acceptable for proxies, I was able to put in Guy's Cradle or proxy it into this deck. Got you. And so you have the Georg Monster and a discard outlet normally. If not, maybe one Mana Dork. This loop may not be perfect if you're doing the in-step way where you have only the Gitrog Monster and Dakmore, which we can touch on in a minute. Got gotcha. you. So you have Guy's Cradle, same loop. So let's say Guy's Cradle's in your hand and you have Crop Rotation in your hand and okay. you have no graveyard, no deck. We're in the position to where we have, you know, infinite draw triggers on the stack. Mm -hmm. So we still have Elvish Spirit Guide. Gotcha. So we're going to exile the Elvish Spirit Guide or just have a green mana in play. Just we need one green man to start the loop. Mm -hmm. So Elvish Spirit Guide, green mana, Crop Rotation. Okay. And... In response, and you sack a land of any kind, and you can take Gaia's Cradle and discard it. Mm. And if, if you need a way to like save yourself from draw triggers, because you are creating draw triggers, and that's the that's the part you have to kind of like kind of waver back and forth. Is mm -hmm. you have no library, and you have you get a sack, a, a draw trigger from the crop rotation, and say you need it in you need Gaia's Cradle into your deck. You have to discard the guy's cradle. So now you have two draw triggers on the stack that have to get resolved before you start doing this stuff, and that could kill you. So mm. between these two things, you have to discard, you know, maybe a Titan, maybe just a random card that's not a land, just so you can kind of like buffer and just draw some cards. Right. So you right. don't lose the game. So right. in between those, you will discard a Titan and just a non land. Right. And then you draw those, and then with the search on the stack, discard the Titan. Guy's Cradle goes into your deck of maybe um, Titan, Guy's Cradle, and like maybe your non lane card you're looking for that you put in there to filter so you don't mm -hmm. lose the game. Okay. You draw and search resolves. You get Guy's Cradle. Okay. Comes into play. Okay. You tap Guy's Cradle. You make your two green mana. Mm. And so now you have crop rotation in the graveyard and you have no more, uh, no more deck. And you okay. have crop rotation is the only thing in the graveyard. Okay. From there, you discard a Titan to for the shuffle trigger. Mm -hmm. Now you have a library of Titan and crop rotation. Gotcha. And now with your this is all in response to all your infinite draw triggers. So mm -hmm. then you resolve two of them, draw crop rotation, you draw your Titan, and you have two green mana in the pool. So now the way we have this loop is you have Titan in your whole deck, crop rotation in hand. Gaia's Cradle in play. So now you can do the cool loop of playing crop rotation, mm -hmm. sacrificing the Gaia's Cradle, draw trigger on the stack, you know, discard a Titan, and you have that draw. And there's always the risk of you potentially could be drawing your Gaia's, your Gaia's Cradle with these draws. So mm -hmm. you, you can, dis, you can uh, discard, you know, two or three non lands into buffer it. And you, if you, even if you do draw it, you can. Of course, discard it again on the stack, put some more cards in, and then resolve them. So there's there's always the threat of losing, mm -hmm. but as long as you play it slow and, and you think it out, mm -hmm. you, you will be fine. 100%. But, so that's where it kind of gets kind of tricky with the sacking lands and doing things because crop rotation does require you to, you know, put lands in the graveyard. Understood. And if you're not Understood. careful, like, you can lose the game. That, and so with yeah. this loop, search on the stack, guy's cradle in the deck, you get it back out comes into play have it again you net one mana every time do this loop and make infinite green mana mm -hmm. that's and that's the way good. you do it for this one okay normally i don't do this loop as often because i don't normally need the infinite green mana but the deck can perform this loop if you do need infinite green mana 100 percent and we use of course that that infinite green could be used for whatever we want to use granted we only need two green for the finale of De devastation but uh it's just good to know how to make the infinite green in case i don't know 
whatever universe there is where we need that is so that, that very good question pie um one last thing uh before we finish off the win cons is we have um P uh, we have another mo mtg bring it up that you can also do it with lotus petal but saying that you don't run that combo in this deck is there a reason that uh do you do you ever leverage lotus petal to make infinite mana whether it be infinite green or infinite black or is that something that you just prefer to do everything at instant speed yeah so absolutely if there's if it also depends on the games you're playing so yeah you can do the exact same thing so take out uh replace dark ritual with that whole loop mm -hmm. with lotus petal okay and you're doing everything sorcery speed gotcha and so it's let's one in so with the loops in theory takes much longer because you have to make a bunch of draw triggers on the stack mm -hmm. and then also empty your draw triggers because right. you're doing this at sorcery speed right yes, right right you can play a little pedal do the loop make some draw triggers you mm -hmm. only really need like two or three and then sack it the lotus pedal make any mana you want discard a titan put them on top and then resolve the draw triggers and if you need to lose some draw triggers you can discard the titan and then um put out the draw triggers that way and go back and forth and then you make infinite mana that way 100%. normally i find it easier to do everything at instant speed and also it really just it gets them yeah and yeah. that is a good segue i want to bring into the combo lastly being resilient and yes. why i love this combo yes. so i know some people are probably thinking well all i have to do is just kill the get rock monster or kill a discard atlas because it's on the stack in response i kill it yeah and then boom combo done right and you're very correct except you can put another draw trigger on the stack continue mm. the combo all over again <laughs> with the with the kill spell in response bro and i gotta cut you off Check this out, man. You and I need to get you connected, whoever, uh, with another Mo MTG. Tell me why this brother said, My fave is when they try to exile the, the Dakmore and you discard a land on top of it at instant speed to get the Dakmore back. Or when they try to kill the Get Rock Monster you, and you do have the loop to draw your deck in response and kill the kill on uh, to kill the Get Rock just to get an, uh, an Autumn's Veil or some other things to <laughs> protect it. Like, man i love what you're talking about resiliency and it really shows the power of everything you've talked about so keep going i just i just want i really would love to connect y'all too because i kid you not like you and him been in sync with the chat and what you've been saying go ahead brother no no problem it's all yeah he he knows it or they know it they 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 see it it's, 100%. it's a great feeling and it always it always gets people because you know this deck's not around so often mm -hmm. so People see it and they go, oh, they're going to combo. They can kind of see it and they go, okay, I'm going to kill Gerog in response. So let's say you have a discard outlet, mm -hmm. you have the Gerog monster, and you discard your Dakmore salvage. And we'll say for fun, you have a uh, fetch land. Just fetch land is also in play. That's one thing that I try to do the most is I don't crack my fetches immediately unless I need that mana. 100%. Because every uncracked fetch is a draw trigger I can do immediately. Mm -hmm. So I have Gerog, a discard outlet, Dakmore in hand, and a Polluted Delta in play. So I discard Dakmore Salvage, put a draw trigger on the stack. Mm. Someone goes, in response, I'm going to have or destroy, remove the Gitrog monster. Right. So in response to that <laughs> i'm going to crack my fetch new draw trigger is now on top of the swords or removal spell right 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 now right gonna, right i want to take that draw trigger and that's going to be the new dakmore draw trigger yeah and then i want to mill two put it back to my hand in response to the swords i'm going to combo off on top of you yes 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 and yes. for every piece of interaction they have as long as you have one land in hand because the same thing can happen if you have some lands in hand and a discard outlet you can just in response discard a land draw trigger on the stack get that board back and then go on top of it right 100 percent. that makes sense yes so, man they're absolutely so you know they remove dac more in response boom combo on top of that and it takes so much removal first it takes creature removal which there's probably not enough of in cdh yeah 
there definitely was a whole bunch back then right right but nowadays right. it's mostly just non-creature permission counter spells right right and maybe some bounce mm -hmm. so it's already you also need so you need removal you're going to need at least three pieces <laughs> of removal to fully get rid of my the the get rog right but the same goes for graveyard hate there is very little instant speed graveyard hate that's real now, there is you know We'll go. We'll talk about the stacks later about like what stops the Arug monster from doing it. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. it, it does. It's crushed by some some stacks creatures. But yeah, uh, they try to interact with it. You have a land in hand. Boom. In response to you trying to stop me, I went on top of that. Mm. And you just keep doing that for as many draw triggers you can create. Man, amazing example of the resiliency, brother. Man, because I was wondering, like, I mean, bro, there's so many steps in this, like. A lot of my combos that I prefer to use are like either I'm doing a lot of steps through silence or I'm doing minimal steps that puts nothing on the stack that leaves less points of interaction for my opponents. So I love how you bring up is like though there is maybe not as many steps as a Nala, but it's it's, it's like a, a Nala light where it's uh, it's not as many steps, but it's still a lot of points of interaction that your opponents can try to stop the com combo. But I love how you say it. it's literally as simple as just this cracking a fetch or discarding another land to our discard outlet to keep the loop going and went on top of it just to find a veil of summer or whatever else we want to keep it going uh you also bring up another really good point that i completely forgot about but yes uh silence effects yes people will play silence effects yes and they go ha ha and let there maybe you don't have a draw trigger on top of it and so a silence goes through mm-hmm and they go, you are stopped. You cannot cast creatures. Mm -hmm. You cannot win right now. Yes. And they're absolutely right. Yep. Until my cleanup. Yep. Because after instep, silence effects goes away and I have to discard down. Yep. Now that that's gone, I can do my combo all over again and just combo up my own cleanup to instep and then win the game again. Literally. And we even have another Mo MTG saying uh, the green channel lands allow you to play through rule of law effects. So it just seems like no matter what the whatever the MG, MTG um, CDH meta tries to throw at y'all, y'all just keep having ways to play around it. Whether it's the ch the channel lands to play through rule of law, whether it's excuse me, where it whether it's you leveraging the cleanup step to get around silence effects. It's just it seems like you all like with the mastery of and understanding of the rules. Your the Get Rock Monster honestly just has infinite potential and ways to just win through things that would completely shut down other decks, man. Oh yeah, and ab they're absolutely right. There's um, there was one game in particular. I think I told you about this when we talked before. And it was, I had two opponents. Yeah. One had a risk study. One had a mystic remora. Yeah. And they said, we know your combo. You can go through the combo, but we will draw interaction and we will stop you. Mm. I said, okay, that's probably a good point. You know, I, I can, I can only stop so much, but you know, then once they draw force will force negation, even worse, they get rid of the exile. Yeah. My, my, um, my combo pieces, my mind break trap, even worse. Yeah. So. The channel lands, all I have to do is make in I have to make um get rocks in play. Besage you only costs one green. Mm -hmm. I do the loop. I give those two players maybe two cards because the loop itself doesn't if I don't cast any spells, I can put any card into my hand mm. without casting spells. Right. So I do the loop to at least get guys cradle into play, tap it. I had a few mana dorks, so it made four green mana. Mm. So now I only gave them two cards each. Those were not the cards to stop me, and then I did the loop again, channeling Besage you and killing both of their draw engines. Wow! And then I went on top of that, and then I was able to win the game. Wow! Golly, man, bro, this I love the vibrancy and uh, just so much like the potential of this deck and. So I want to talk about tutors because there's so many like complexity lines, but we got to get to those lines. But before we go to tutors, are there any other combos in addition to the Death Rite, Finale, Devastation, or Orcish Bowmaster loops that um, are other are win cons? I think that's kind of the main. Those are the main ones. Uh, I recently I made a change and I took out Opposition Agent. I'm trying it out. I know Abo Agent is a really good card. And right. It, honestly should be in every black deck and i might end up putting it back in but originally um you would flash in an oppo agent and then destroy all your opponent's lands with assassin's trophy well they can't search 
got gotcha. alpha wage anyway and so that was one thing you could also do this there's an argument say well just assassin trophy let them get the land and then assassin trophy that land exactly so there's there was that that one there's of course you know destroy all their permanents mm -hmm. put a put a get rog in play put your deck back where it was make it all nice and flush with all 90 plus cards right and say i'm ready to continue the game now <laughs> i have a six six you all have nothing right right exactly and exactly coast to coast exactly but other than that those are the the other ways of doing it those are the those are the main ways of, of winning the game okay i feel that well with that said then let's talk about tutors like what are the tutors that the get rock mustard does to put together and get those three pieces well really only two because it's discard outlet and D dacmore salvage what are our tutor package looking like yes so we're in green black and we are a creature combo deck so we're very blessed with having the absolute best tutors for our combo we have of course the the original the good uh demonic tutor 100%. vampiric tutor imperial seal and we can really leverage imperial seal way more than our opponents because we can do a draw trigger whatever we want if we have get rock in place so we can imperial seal say we need a uh we, we're missing death more salvage we got some lands in hand mm -hmm. so i have um discord outlet get rock in play imperial seal put deck more on top discard a land draw my deck more win the game okay 100%. so that's a, one line you can do and then of course you know creature creature tutors you have your elder evolution we talk about finale um finale devastation really good one especially mm -hmm. if you have your graveyard too mm -hmm. and some of the weird tutors are the entomb effects yes i was gonna so ask also, about sometimes you just need to put dacmore into the graveyard mm -hmm. so you can dredge it back mm -hmm. and so we're running into to put dacmore in and unmarked grave from modern horizons 2 which i think has been a really big help too right hundred percent man we and also i'm have, yeah go ahead brother oh yeah no i'm oh, also and then, uh, just, yeah i'm also seeing a uh a final party as well oh yeah that's that's the spicy tutor that's the one card win condition Ooh, okay so i'm okay no i'll let you say it go ahead brother go ahead brother so we're also running invasion of icoria mm -hmm. because you know it's just x tutors are good yes. and i try to keep um tutors that can get both green and black creatures um summer's pact is the only exception just because it has other good lines too sometimes you need to, a draw card and yeah. summer's pact is a land because we're running dryad arbor and so that is a oh, fancy way to get a draw card you're right. through you know, through a tutor that way and it's all instant speed right 100 percent. yes and so we're running uh, we used to run Greens and Zenith. I'm still thinking about it. The problem is the main Discord outlet I want is Future Imp, which is a one black, it's a one mana, one, one, one black pip, and then discard a card. I think it just gives it flying or something. It's, <laughs> I don't really pay attention to what the effects are. I just see one, Discard one outlet row. and I just go, I go to it. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, discard a card, this card, this creature gains flying until the end of turn. Also has threshold, um, uh, put a one one counter or gets plus one plus one and can't be blocked. But it's one mana outlet that it discards a card, which is great. And Green Sun doesn't really get that, but Green Sun does get uh, Sylvan Safekeeper, which is one of the best cards in the whole deck, and Allosaur Shepherd. So right, yeah. Do some more adjusting. I might put those uh, Green Sun back into play, back in the deck. And, I mean, it still does get. Um, for three mana, you can get uh, the other ones like Noose Constrictor and Wild Mongrel. There's a two mana uh, green creature discount outlets. So there's yep. always that too. But yeah, so Final Parting is the best tutor in the whole deck. It's five mana. It's a lot of mana. Gotcha. But the card says, find uh, search your library for two cards. Put one to your hand and one to the graveyard mm -hmm. it is the perfect setup to five mana get a putrid imp put it to your hand and put a deck more salvage into the graveyard you have garag in play that makes a draw trigger afterwards and then you get to draw a card and then boom you have everything you need right there wow so for basically three colorless and three black that's game it's game wow you gotta cast the or even better yet say you know it's the 
we didn't really go over it in the end, but there's a way to, to win with the Garog monster where you have only the Garog monster and mm -hmm. Nakmore salvage, and you use your cleanup step to win the game. I've only done it once. I don't recommend it mm -hmm. because you can't control it. You have to, you have to manually, slowly, kind of talking about the Chains of Mephistopheles line where you have to go to cleanup, discard Dakmore and, you know, down to seven. Mm -hmm. And then you dredge it back to your hand. And if you dredge another land, you draw another card. And then you have a moment said, okay, can I cast any of these spells? Is it is one of these dark rituals or any of these dark ritual? If no, discard down to seven. Right. Get Dakmore trigger, put it back in your hand. And it's a very long and now when you do have to play out because there is potential for interaction. Mm -hmm. And there's also not the best way to uh save yourself. Because you can't discard a land, you may not have uh a draw trigger won't do anything because you're doing everything sorcery speed and very slowly. Right, so right, right. So if you remove the Yarg monster, he's gone. Mm, Which I, no, I don't, I don't recommend that one the most. But there is a way to where if you have the Yarg monster and you have you know seven cards in hand and you play Final Parting, put it all to your hand and then go to end step and then win the game. So there's also that line too you can go to. Mm. But so on top of these sorcery and in instant tutors that specifically just you know say search your library get a card any any zone those mm -hmm. are great yeah but it's also the really really sneaky subset of tutors that are really good for dakmore mm. and it bulgari grave troll and having a discard outlet mm. this is my favorite way of getting dakmore because most people will just let it happen they see what they're doing but they don't really connect the dots at first mm. and so if you have a discard outlet and you have get rock and golgari grave trolls in your hand that is almost as good as having dakmore in hand wow because you can discard the golgari grave troll if you can produce at least one draw trigger with grave troll starting in your graveyard you can then dredge six. Got you, hundred percent. Any of those lands, you put a draw trigger on the stack. But the way dredge works is that Grave Troll goes to your hand, and the draw trigger is now on the stack. In mm. response to that draw trigger, I want to discard Golgari Grave Troll, and then let the draw slash dredge six resolve. And it's not exactly well, but one out of six cards will almost always be a land. Mm. And if you're really lucky what will happen is you will dredge over your Dakmore and then mm. Dakmore will put own draw trigger and then you replace that draw with Dakmore's draw trigger or dredge put it to your hand and then boom you have Dakmore, Discard Outlet and the Gitrog Monster gotcha so, so we let dredging is the, so we lever the sneaky way of right. getting your, your combo for Dakmore so got you guys so it's we can you we can leverage our creature tutor to hands in order to basically have another Dakmore salvage that po is possible to fizzle out but very unlikely with a land count of what is this 34 very unlikely to fizzle out on a land count of 34 making sure we hit the land drops and if hopefully eventually hit the Dakmore salvage to just end out the game okay that makes sense so you've talked about a lot of amazing great tutors uh and so now i want to know in addition to the amazing get rock monster how are we drawing cards brother Ooh, that is a good question so the thing i told you oh, i discussed about earlier was i recently took out oppo agent yes. because i don't think it it is a good card it is a really good card i'm trying without it because i wanted to find room for the wondering because you know the wondering it's you said yourself it is just one of the best draw engines that wizards ever gave us oh, it 1 is billion so percent. clean it's too free and so i'm gonna try out that way so that is that is a way to draw cards i just put in the deck right uh, the other one is silver library okay which is the the green ristic study if you will <laughs> that people used to say in the olden days <laughs> right 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 <laughs> okay and so other than those two cards there's not a whole lot of card draw you kind of you leverage having all your cards are either going to make mana mm -hmm. or get you to your combo and that's where you're trying, you're trying to leverage so even your lands gotcha. so if you have a, a you have a get rock monster in play and a discard outlet and a bunch of lands in hand you can just 
discard your lands and draw cards and try to dig your way to the deck to deck more salvage or at least get a tutor that can find you deck more salvage or vice versa mm, got you got and you, so that's got what you. You're, you're trying to leverage got you 100 percent. okay that um that actually makes 100 percent sense now i'm seeing also that you have a bizarre back there with even even though it's net down card draw it's uh it's a way we could put it in a pinch have you ever found yourself using bizarre back there to like okay fuck like oh, this, we about to lose the game let me try this is one of my new favorite cards of the deck so again like i talked about um olden times no one likes proxies but now everyone's like yeah we want to we want to see your best deck we want to exactly. play you you know not what you can afford and so i went all out and i said you know my friends do he said in swears by bizarre baghdad is the best card in the whole deck I said okay i'll try it out first 100%. game absolutely phenomenal wow this with gear rock in play so sorry baghdad tap it to draw two cards yeah in which then you discard three cards immediately afterwards mm -hmm. so yeah like i said it's net down but with gear rock in play you can tap it to draw two and then discard three cards and if one of those land you get another draw trigger so now you're you drew three cards discarding three cards draw three discarding three so now you're even now you're just filtering which is really good right and right, you can do right. really really cute things with it one of the things i found was i had bizarre baghdad i drew into golgari grave troll hmm. discard it with a land now i got dredge six just from me tapping this one land it drew me into dakmore just immediately afterward because then i had a card outlet i did the whole grave troll thing and yeah and so this one land wow. can really dig you out of all kinds of situations wow man infinite possibilities man i also saw a nurturing pete land as like it, it, it another pinch land not as good as bizarre as baghdad it's it, it from your story it's not it's nowhere as good as bizarre as bizarre baghdad but it definitely is another little piece of card draw there um any other notable pieces of uh notable card draw because we could talk about the veil of summer you draw a card but neither here nor there but any other notable pieces of card draw or is we really leaning on that commander to f keep our grip filled yeah, we're really just we're really heavily leaning on uh, uh, some there's some there's some sequential card draw like um Lake the Dead on ETB at the Sacker Land. Yes. And so that's a way to draw a card. And also, uh, Lake the Dead's also really good because we do run Urborg and Yavamaya. We want perfect man at all times. We don't want anything to be too clunky. Yes. And with Urborg in play and Lake of the Dead. Lake of the Dead can draw you two cards immediately. Right. It enters the battlefield. You have to sacrifice a swamp. And yes. You, they get you to draw. You can then tap it immediately to also sacrifice a swamp to make four mana, which then also draws you a card. Right. Wow. So that's a way to like get two quick draws out of it. Mm -hmm. And for, like I said, like the Veil of Number does draw you a card. Right. And I'm all. If need be. Yeah. And I'm also seeing that, also the, yeah. that we didn't talk about this for win cons, but I'm seeing it ad nauseum as well. Like, is this something that we're actually oh, yeah. trying to use to win, or is this just like a value? You know, we're trying to like draw a nice chunk of cards. Oh yeah, we're we're definitely an ad nauseum deck. Uh, it it does hurt though. It's not perfect. This is one of the the rare decks to where you can do a mini ad nauseum, and it's it's just as good. It gotcha. will get you just as far. 100%. If you can draw, you know seven cards from adnaz that's almost plenty because <laughs> you have to be very careful because you do run you know 21 cmc of two cards in right. your whole deck right and yes yes hitting ulamog really really hurts on adnaz so you have to be very careful but right. yes if you can get an early adnaz and you can draw you know maybe seven ten cards it it'll almost always get you to win the game because you have so much fast mana got you got you got you and you're resilient so it's we're definitely a good ad nos deck god <laughs> we got d saying imagine nosing for lands and being happy 
<laughs> no, I, de I definitely hear what you're saying, brother. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, at this point, we talked about a lot of complex but fun win cons. We've talked about how to get to those win cons with some amazing tutors, notably one that I've actually been sold on, Final Parting, being that three colors and three black just to get that putrid imp and put the Dakmore South in the graveyard just to auto win if our Grit Rock Monster is already on board. And we've also talked about our card draw, which is not plenty, but when we have that card draw in the command zone, we don't need it. You know what I'm saying? But we've talked about how we win him, but we got to also stop our opponents. So what is some removal and interaction that you as a Get Rock player find that you can't leave home without? I am so glad you asked because again, uh, this deck's pretty old. We talked, we discussed that. And I was playing this deck back in 2017 and there was another deck yeah. that was also very popular in 2017. And my friend played it all the time. He was really good with it. And it was Food Chain, mm. OG Food Chain. It was the, he he played one of the first iterations with General Tazri, which was definitely by far one of the, the worst versions of this deck. <laughs> right, uh, right, 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 right. Of course, so, you know, that, you know, it, it went down and got iterations and it got cleaner and faster. Right. But yeah, Food Chain was kind of a menace. Yeah. Because, you know, they're playing a blue deck. Mm. and all I have to do is just land a food chain and they'll have some creatures in play whatnot and if they have the food chain and they definitely have one of the cards exiled that gets them their mana yep. and they're playing blue so land a food chain protect it win the game it's that easy for them mm -hmm. and that was really really difficult for yeah. the deck for my deck to handle right because they can we're both not exactly turbo but their turbo is safer than my turbo. They're right. not going fully all in because they have force of wills and pact of negations mm. and everything. Right. And so I can't do that or I'm too exposed and then I could I could really just lose on the spot if I can't win right now. Right. So in the deck, my friend still swears by it right now. It's still too bad to play, but I kept it in because now we have another enchantment win con that's been taking over CDH right now, Underworld Breach. Mm -hmm. So the deck would run frozen grip mm. and it was just the cleanest way to get rid of a food chain and also a rough decay rough decay and frozen grip are basically almost the same card and okay. it's just two to three mana destroy that artifact enchantment that is going to make my opponent win the game and they can't respond to it exactly and this was my best way of stopping them 100 percent, man and I love that because I yeah. actually just recently added Angel's oh, Grace yeah. to my Marnia's list because I was for the longest time I was looking for a new one mana interactive spell and I found that I loved I was I tried Stifle out because I love Trickbind a lot and I realized very quickly that I didn't love Trickbind because of the Stifle effect. I loved Trickbind because it had split second and could not be interacted with because I just love interaction yeah. that just says once this goes on the stack there's no more conversations it's resolving uh, you're not deflecting swan you're not trying to change the target just in so even though crossing grip isn't i would say the most popular card in cdh it is a card that i do i can see when you're in this um like this golgari two color state where it's just like hey man like i know it's three three mana to destroy target instant in uh, enchantment or artifact but it's going down there unless they have what is the two mana uh blue enchantment that uh you can oh. reveal the top card of your library chat tell me what the real quick oh oh the uh, counterbalance counterbalance oh yeah unless you got counterbalance or you're playing with one of the flip uh flip cards you're not have you're not worried about that so with that being said i love this pros and grip abrupt decay and uh assassin show the amazing interactive spells keep on going bro any more interaction or removal and of course yeah and then as you know deck has gone on we got more cards we got a third piece of enchantment artifact that they can't interact with we got besage you which is <laughs> oh one man with get rock and play it's one mana yes any artifact enchantment or non-basic land it's it's too good so now we have three ways of destroying the enchantment and that was the, yes. the old minute yeah the, yeah the deck also just runs normal interaction, what Black Green is good at, which is just destroying creatures, destroying artifact enchantments. Yeah. And we're just, we can't run any stacks or anything. We do have some 
we do like we do like run aggressively on that axis so like we do have like force of vigor is a good one uh, uh we do run a nature's claim nature's claim is just you know it's just the best answer for what it does that's right. also still in the deck because we're very soft to permanent based graveyard hate so the rest in pieces the ley line of the voids back when this deck was also popular mm-hmm. blood pop is really starting to gain legs yeah and it was slowly becoming the deck that is now and my friend would run it and it had main deck ley line of the void mm. and rest in peace and this deck needs the graveyard to win the game so got you you have to really go on top of that and of course it's even when i play this deck today there was even times when it came up it may not have been very good uh looking back but in the game whenever someone plays a dock side gotcha. and they need you know a certain number of artifact enchantments in play mm-hmm. to do their loot or like a meal they need you know, was it seven artifact enchantments in play and that's how they can combo off yeah it's also been really good just to just start killing you know people's ristic studies mm-hmm. uh mystical morphras or any like mana rocks or anything mm. just like put that artifact enchantment number down to make dock sites even worse 100%. there was one to where of my friend was playing a blue farm list and he was about to really go off a dock side and he i believe they need like maybe three or four treasures to really go off yeah. and i was holding in my hand force of vigor green card and k grip mm. i can do both of them and so i was able to just flat out destroy three artifact enchantments and that was it they made one treasure wow and it was they could do anything else and so it's definitely not what it's there for on that axis but you can play it that way god gotcha, definitely gotcha, gotcha. one thing destroy those rhythmic studies and those smothering tides it's we're really good at that 100 percent. i definitely hear you there bro i hate to hear that as a marnie's player but uh, we'll get off it we'll get over it <laughs> um is there any other removal and interaction you want to touch on i, I see a d- dismember and some other hard to impossibly read cards and oh we've already talked about too but yeah we see a dismember force of vigor and got any other removal and interaction you'd like to talk about uh just we have the pretty standard removal we have you know uh dismember and the deck used to run a fatal push mm-hmm. but uh we're not really we're not too scared of creatures per se i mean we're still very soft to you know Draneth magistrate mm-hmm. um dothy void walker orcs bow masters and um, shield ready apocalypse mm. but we the shield ready see as much play in at least our meta that we see right and Dranith Dranith hurts everyone we we run creature removal but it's only so much we can do right 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 but bow masters like everyone says the best answer for a bow master is to play your own bow master yep <laughs> 100 percent 100 percent i feel you there man okay so if we're if we've talked about the removal interaction now we have i gotta definitely talk ax about the, we've already pretty much talked about it but the protection uh for ourselves our board state and everything and honestly like it sounds like just winning on top of everything just seems like the answer yeah it's it's really good at being able to win at instant speed the thing you you can play the the pattern of kind of hold up like oh i don't have it but you have you know get rock and play and deck more salvage mm-hmm. and you know your opponents have interaction right maybe you don't have interaction for yourself at the moment or you know that they're all all just you to go off right and so you just hold back yeah and then whenever your opponent tries to go for it with them spend their, inter- their interaction on them and then whenever the dust settles and they're still about to win in response then you can go for the win mm. uh, it hasn't come up it hasn't come up very often normally it's you're pretty comfortable just winning right there you play you know autumn's veil veil summer you know green silence if you will right right <laughs> right just, right right just you know upkeep play this and it's we have to do something right now 100 to be able to stop this <laughs> If I remember correctly, like when we met, that was what happened. It was the, the game that we played yeah. together. It was like you had dropped that veil. Yet, like we was like, OK, guys, um, I don't know if we should be scared of this, but I think this is something we should be scared about. So, yeah, no, 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. Keep going, brother. Yeah. So there's 
Um, in green, of course, like we said, you have Autumn Veil, you have Veil Summer, mm -hmm. just two of the best ways to prevent being countered. Um, also does hit, you know, Deadly Rollick or any black removal. Not too, it's really soft to, you know, the paths and the swords and now get lost in the new good white removal. Mm -hmm. uh, what was also really good about Autumn Veil is back in, when I played this back then was, uh, one of the strongest kill spells that we had to play in our meta was Pongify and Rapid Hyperization mm. because there was a, one of our friends in our play group, one of my really good friends played Animar. Yeah, and yeah, that's a good one. The key text on Animar, other than, you know, winning the game with its counters and whatnot, is it has protected from black and white. Mm. So the way you kill Animar is you, you have to run Chain of Vapor, Pongify, Rapid Hyperization, any way you can. Mm. So there's a lot of those in our meta. So Autumn Veil and Veil of Summer did really well at stopping those. But yeah, still soft yes. as Path and Sword without those cards for the protection. Yeah, not, but like, she's bro. When you can win on top of a Sword to Plowshare, who needs a deflecting swat? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Man, I love that. Okay. Um, in the rain, in the realm of uh, just more interaction for our opponents, are we running any notable stacks pieces? Not a whole lot of stacks pieces. Uh, like I said before, there's uh, some decks that do run Chains of a Leaf, which is a really good stacks piece. I tried it out. It's really good. It's really hard to combo with it, and it's even harder to get rid of it before right. you combo off with it. Yeah. Because you can't yeah. combo with it, but if they say they want you to play the whole combo, you, you have to play the whole combo, and it just makes it even longer. Yeah. And I didn't see that the, the juice was worth the squeeze of <laughs> playing this card that's not exactly even the best yeah. at preventing card draw because they're just gonna they're just going to sculpt their hand. Right. And some cards even some decks want cards in the graveyard. They go, yeah, I'll happily put this Sabine's Reclamation in the graveyard. Right. More than happy to. Right. And, right. You know, right. Right. Underworld Breach. So I took that one out. Um, the deck used to run a long time ago, Null Rod and Collector Oof. Because we, mm. we didn't really rely on artifacts. We were a heavily creature mana. So that was one thing the deck used to do. But now with having more and more artifacts that are just good. Uh, Wishclaw Talisman, again, as a tutor. Uh, the Jeweled Lotus. Uh, the new inclusion of Grim Monolith I haven't played. But some decks have played, even in the past. We're, we're playing more artifacts, so we can't yeah. really risk putting in a uh null rod effect and then we're kind of ice cold to our own null rod exactly we can't play the game exactly. either so that one we had, we had to take out as well yeah yeah nah i um we have another mo into g saying i love the oof considering the paradox engine on the stick on it. oh talk to us what you mean by that oh the docs i got you again yeah, the dock side on the stick talk to us a little more about what you mean with that comment but I definitely hear you. Uh, the 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 oofs and the no rods really aren't that where you want to go. Are is there ever a time where you thought about running Manglehorn in this list? There, there's been a few times. Uh, with this deck though, in particular, because we we don't again we don't have we don't have a lot of card draw. Right. So one of the worst things you can draw is mana when you're trying to go for the win. Right. And so just putting in another like a Manglehorn effect is. It's good. It does stop people, but it's like I, I really need a a land or a tutor or some action. And so putting in this stacks, the stacks pieces, it really does hurt sometimes. So I'm, this you. version of it, I'm trying to take more of them out. I guess technically you could say Deathrite Shaman is technically a stacks piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah here and there. <laughs> it, there's been situations to where I had to hold it up and just you know there's. Uh, there's a graveyard player, underworld breach player, and they're kind of threatening to go off. And we're right. like, okay, we'll hold up Deathrite Shaman and some mana. We'll, we'll see what you do. Got you, yeah. No, yeah, uh, on clarification of what Mo was saying is that um, Collector Oof is great against Dockside and even Minglehorn being able to kind of slow things down and say, hey, you, you'll get your treasures, but you're not going to be able to use them. However, from what I'm hearing from you, please correct me if I misunderstood this, it's like kind of like, yo, 
we may not be as fast as Rockside, but we're trying to be more of a proactive deck. We're not trying to slow people down. And even when it comes to our interactive package, uh, we, we would rather one run an instant speed, nature's claim, or Croson's grip, or force of vigor over the mango horn because it allows us to be proactive in interacting at instant speed when we're already comboing off versus where the mango horn may be. It's a great stacks piece, but the deck, and especially Devin's brew is trying to be more proactive than trying to stop our opponents. Is that what I'm receiving correct? Right, yeah. Okay. And it's definitely like, it's not unheard of that the way you play, um, you play proactively and you, you know, if you, you have a, a good solid hand of cards that they're not, it's not fast, but it's solid. And that game plan could include holding up removal for your opponent's Rhystic Studies. Cause one of the most popular turn one, turn two plays is land ramp tutor for rhystic study mystic remora right and then if you can just punish that by just abrupt decay right uh assassin's trophy nature's claim to save you and just make them use the resources to get this one enchantment that they're kind of leaning on and you just take it away from them right. that is a good way to slow them down and then now you put yourself up right 100 percent. that makes 100 percent sense okay that makes sense yeah okay cool well if we're not running stacks which is actually it makes a lot of sense that means we're trying to go fast so what's our rent package looking like brother our rent package it is primarily creatures the one mana one ones that make mana so you know you're running not all of them boiled druid is just too it makes the mana too clunky not clunky but too bad yeah, you yeah. really want more you want pip mana yeah yeah 100%. so you know we're running the whole package uh, Bird's Paradise, Deathrite Shaman. Mm -hmm. The only exception to that is the Light of Halfling because Uncounter will get Rog. That is life or death sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> There's times they they have the Force of Will and they're waiting for you. And if you can have in your souls or lay down a Light of Halfling, that just slams that door shut. There's 100%. no way they can come back. They're they're heavily leaning on that Force. Got you. But yeah, yeah Finhorn Elves, um, Elvish, Mystic. Uh, all those that good stuff and we do run artifact mana um pearl mox grim monolith is a good one mm -hmm. jewel those is a really big help because we are a five mana commander yeah yeah i definitely We're hear you very there. expensive <laughs> man yeah no, i definitely hear you there are there yeah like okay i'm also seeing a carpet of flowers which i've always been on the wall of but recently i've i've kind of opened my heart up to carpet of the flowers it's it, it the consistency of it all you need is one blue player everybody's trying to play Ristic and mystic so if you could just even if you're only making one blue mana per turn that no you pay one green investment so the next three to four turns before while you're getting towards when you have that extra green it seems really good man oh yeah the carpet flower is always great since uh even when we first played things cdh i remember playing cdh and we were watching whenever playing with power first started mm -hmm. like you know four or five years ago right and we were watching them me and my friend and someone played turn one carpet flowers i'm like what is this garbage old card <laughs> Never heard of it. Never heard of looked into it and we're like wow this card is amazing this card is phenomenal yeah 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 because you know we're like food chain so he's like oh my god i can just play carpet into food chain on main phase two turn one like that's that's insane that's amazing yeah I mean, like I, yeah like they're expensive so any extra mana for free is yeah it's awesome exactly it <laughs> and the card was like not even that discovered yet. i i do believe playing with power put the the spotlight on carpet flyers because we immediately went to our game store and mm -hmm. we bought one and it was only like two dollars before it had any reprints from <laughs> urza saga yeah and we're like wow this is really cheap and then like maybe two months later the car was already 20 bucks yeah like, oh so damn. We're, not, we're not the only one that saw this <laughs> shit man i am mad at that i think there's a good card it's definitely not as powerful like as it like i mean i feel like it's it's not as powerful as its peak of power but i do think it in the wave of how powerful this card has been it's definitely on the build back up because within this mid-range meta where everyone's just slamming Rhystic Study and Mystic Remoras, I'm like, okay, eventually there's only so many times you're going to avoid playing the island. You're going to have to 
fetch for uc fetch for a tundra fetch for a tropical island and you're just gonna feed the fuck out of it so yeah it, i definitely hear you there i'm also seeing a wild growth though and i'm not mad at that good good ramp piece any other ramp pieces that uh really come to mind that stick out great for this yeah. deck um wild growth is what was that Oh, yeah, I'm seeing any other ramp pieces that really stick out for you. I know you already talked about the rituals a bit, but yeah, can talk to us, brother. Yeah, there's uh, there's the permanents that make man as well. Wild growth is a great one because, you know, in a creature hostile game, wild growth is just good, reliable one mana. Yeah, 100%. Uh, two mana for one land. Cool. Kind of like my mini carpet of flowers, I normally see it as. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, we are so a lot of rituals. It's not uncommon to ritual out uh, a get rug monster or any sort of combo piece stuff like that but i took a, a big long break not a long well but a 343 four three years somewhere in there a break from get rug and I was playing modern and some other decks and we started playing cds like maybe a year and a half ago again i started playing winotas and blue farm mod of the more current meta mm -hmm. and there was a deck kind of a meme and my friend played it one time at one tournament and just he wiped the whole pod and there was mm. nothing to do about it and it was Varal's it was Varal's Hulk mm. before um I think it was after Flash got banned uh but yeah so Varal's is just a one green black commander that has sacrifice a creature Varal's against indestructible at the end of turn that is the matter it's the sacrifice a creature that matters so you have a three mana sack outlet in your commander and you're in black green you're just a protein hulk deck and you're just you're turbo hulk wow and it was really funny and we were talking and we're like hey we're talking about like you know meta breakers mm -hmm. and my friend goes you know i bet no one is ready for verals <laughs> and I was like you're absolutely right no one's going to expect verals and right. verals got some really good support like it got you know culling ritual which is a if you play culling ritual in a Veral's deck you almost essentially just win the game by default because right your old deck is based on reanimates and putting cards in the graveyard and then getting hulk to the graveyard with mana and it's it's great and so right. i trying to make that work um it was pretty it's pretty glass cannony so i tried other versions of the deck using minsk and some partner commands it wasn't working very well and it's like man like this good but like creature comms are really good in the meta because quote unquote creatures are uncounterable pretty and much i saw my friend about this and we're like man what what good you know creature combo deck can really utilize culling ritual right and he goes your get rock deck <laughs> just play the get rock monster. like oh yeah <laughs> and culling rituals just phenomenal just let your opponents do play things turn one turn two yep ramp into culling ritual wipe their whole board with the mana like get rug play sack outlet win the game yep nice clean and simple i absolutely love this card nice I, and clean, I agree yeah. i agree with you 100 this card is fucking amazing bro oh yeah it's it utilizes it so well it's it's a it's removal it's ramp it's 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 a great card overall it, it really helped out the deck 100 percent. yeah man are there any other ramp pieces you'd like to touch on uh, there's uh, there's some small things like going back to the rituals like there's a there's a calling the week in there you can you know because a quick spurt of black mana uh, of course guy's cradle one of the best ones yep. like the dead if you want another quick spurt of mana by sacking the land at a cost but mostly it's your creatures creatures artifacts and then um, if you need to go over the top use those ritual effects got you cool um, well, then with that said, you already kind of started touching on it. Like we got Guy's Cradle and Lake of Dead are some really powerful, notable land based inclusions. Like what are some other powerful land bases? We've been talking about lands all this time because we're the Get Rock deck. But talk to us about your favorite lands in this deck and why they are such. So we we definitely already went over Bizarre Baghdad. Yeah. I think Bizarre Baghdad is it's definitely it's probably my favorite good land in the whole deck doesn't make any mana but it makes up for it by just being you know not neutral but like it feels like card advantage card advantage in the sense that you're putting cards into your graveyard which 
you want them there sometimes. Right. Um, of course, Dak or Salvage being being the combo. Um, some good notable small ones that kind of go under under the radar is a uh, Crystal Vein, mm. which is a it's a one shot ancient tomb or city of traders exactly by sacrificing it so you have it's two things it's small amount of ramp and it's also a way to sack a land to get a draw trigger right 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 it's playing both roles right there wow so it's card draw as well yeah it's wow. it it kind of does a little bit of everything so you know you're doing a get rock loop and you want a way to protect yourself you can just put in a crystal vein a fetch land or even uh, Nurturing Peatland, because Nurturing Peatland is really tap it and one, draw two cards. Really. <laughs> Man. From a land. <laughs> Dude, that's good. Okay, okay, I see, I see where you're going. You're cooking, you're cooking. Keep going, brother. Yeah. Other than that, you just have typically just normal, good utility lands or just, mm -hmm. just good general lands. Like you have your Ancient Tomb, you have uh, uh, really good color fixing with good fetches you mm -hmm. have the shock and duel you have herbor gavamaya make sure your man is always clean uh dried arbor also kind of like the jack of all trades it can be it can be ramp sometimes if you have a creature tutor and you want to put it into play yeah it can be a way we talked before about summoner's packs put it into your hand to discard it to get a just a draw trigger immediately right in play right right exactly. it can be kind of sneaky too it can chump block sometimes if you really need it to by just a fetch land. So right. it it does a lot. It does hurt to draw it sometimes, but I think the the pros outweigh the cons I, with it I in the deck. It. Yeah, yeah, and no, I definitely hear they're like yeah. no dry arbor is definitely a fun land, especially because you can you're not running it currently, but there is like one like you could if you have the what is the pay green and X, what is that uh, tutor called again? Oh, Green Sun Zenith. Green Sun Zenith. One of the like the cool things you can do with this is that you can always just go land Green Suns for uh, for zero to get dried out uh, dried arbor out. So this is really like I'm I'm not mad at this. You know what I'm saying? Especially in low color deck, it sucks to play it as a land drop because that's somebody sitting this technically. But it's like eh, it's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll live with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question. So you're I'm not seeing the new cycle of surveil landed here. Uh, is there any reason on that? Yes, that is a good question because I was actually just thinking about it two weeks ago, a week or so ago about adding that here because I do think the Severe Lands are really good. Yes. And with this deck, you know, it's just Surveil, you know, you could be lucky. You put that, that Dakmore on the top or in the graveyard, however you want it, or it's just a card you don't want. Surveil is always good. Right. And even potentially, you can... You can get a draw trigger off of it with get rock you could just land on top put to the graveyard draw a card right that, that's a line you could do with surveil man so right. i was thinking about adding it in there yeah especially because it's fetchable as well it's just kind of like it just really feels like it's the epitome of like hey bro like this just gets the job done it's like you mean i don't know what you would switch it out for but it seems like it just it just really would fit good in this deck so yeah like that makes sense yeah so we're getting ready to close down, but before we do, I just really just want to like, we haven't, there's a couple categories that we haven't touched on and I'm sure some of the, I don't know, but the first big one is discard outlets. I'm looking at your creature base and there's a lot of ways to just, it says discard a card, get some BS. So could you talk to us about our uh, discard outlet? Yeah, of course. So uh, what's really good about this, the deck is the resiliency and also that your deck is just, it's flooded with combo cards. Like all, yeah. a good good percentage of the whole deck is part of the combo or a way to get to the combo yeah. easily. So there's actually a lot more discard outlets. I don't know about a lot more. There's probably two or three more that you could run here. Mm -hmm. um, there's the enchantment, which I was meaning to put in here. Mm -hmm. And it's called Oblivion Crown. And it's one to black, flash, and enchantment aura. Target creature gets uh has discard a card, target creature, it gets plus one plus one until the end of turn. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like these effects like like um news constrictor where it's like discard a card, it gets plus one plus one until the end of turn. So it's kind of like that effect, but it's flash and on enchantment. 
the only thing that's like kind of holding you back from it is sometimes with the if i do have to do the guy's cradle loops uh the guy's cradle loop really works really well whenever you have a creature discard outlet the get rock monster because then you're always going to make at least two mm -hmm. and then crop rotation is just one green so you net one green every time you do the loop right and so if you're doing that version with guy's cradle you, you only make one and you have to use the one got you got you got so you. it's not a huge it's not a huge concern or deal but that was one thing i was thinking about it's also the deck plus it's kind of tight mm -hmm. i have to cut probably a piece of uh removal potentially got to you. squeeze it in there but yeah just your whole deck is just uh creature side is mana or tutor or win the game got you got you got you and and 100 percent zella part of those uh i do hear you there and part of those like win con condensity we see is like for discard outlets i'm seeing like wild mongrel and uh let's see of course can't leave home without putrid imp as a discard outlet like keep talking to us about these discard outlets brother yeah so there was i used to run another one in this deck a long ago whenever i first built the deck and it's called scourge familiar and it was funny enough to get a full modern reprint mm -hmm. in MH2, which is a five mana creature that has discard a card, make a black mana. Mm -hmm. So on itself, when you do the loop with that creature, it, you already just make it a black mana. Just it's part of the loop. It's clean. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's five mana. Yeah. You're paying for your commander twice to do this loop. And as I play with it more, it'd be the only discard outlet in my hand. It's like, man, this is... But if it was not this discard outlet, if it was any other discard outlet, it'd be perfect. Right, so right, 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 right. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's just so many of these two mana creatures, discard a card, get an effect. Exactly. And the more that wizards keep sprinting, the better the deck gets. Yeah. Because then there's been many, many times whenever um they destroy the discard outlet mm -hmm. and I just draw another one. Yep. Or I just get a tutor. And get another one it's just mm -hmm. no big deal just because you're not ice cold to this is my only discard outlet i have to protect it protect it at all times right and it is technically correct to go for the discard outlet to destroy it because on face value if i'm comboing and you destroy the garak monster the garak monster can come back next turn because it's my commander right but the discard outlet is in the graveyard and so you have to you're forcing me to tutor or draw it again so it's always correct to go for the discord outlet in most cases i, I will say but yeah just sometimes you just have you have another one in hand and you go for the win and mm -hmm. they they use the removal on the discard outlet and you go okay cool play another discard outlet <laughs> do the same thing all over again 100 percent. yeah i mean please there's so <laughs> many in here like we got Putrid Imp, Una's Prowler, uh, Olivia's Dragoon, Noose Constrictor. Please, man. Uh, did, did I miss oh, any of these, any more uh, of your main discard outlets in this current list? There's a, a wild mongrel at the very bottom of yes. the creatures. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, that's a good one. I like yeah. the art for this one. We had a quick question uh, for, from D Mage. Is he not, uh, it says, is he not running Oblivion Crown? Question mark. I thought it was um, the best one because it's Flash. Yeah, it's, I am thinking about it. Uh, it does, and with, of course, being the combo being primarily black mana to win the game, it definitely is correct to put it in. And I may replace Una's Prowler with Oblivion Crown because Una's Prowler also. It has the one downside that anyone can do this, which is one in a black, three, three, one flyer, discard a card, Unus probably gets minus two, minus O until the end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. Right. And there's been a very small handful of times whenever I have Unus Prowler in play, you just, you, you only want, you always want a discard outlet in play and they make a, my opponents make a swing at me. Right. And maybe I don't need the Unus Prowler, but it's, it's three damage. And so they swing some things at me and I go for a block and it surprises them. And so in response, they discard some cards and then make my Unus Prowler a zero one. And then I lose my Prowler and they keep their creature. Right, right, so right. That, that has come up once or twice. Okay. So they, they are correct. The Blue Crown is the best one because it really gets you, it really gets that gotcha, gotcha. where it's like, all I have is Gearog monster and that's it. And they go, yeah, he he needs a discard outlet in play. Right. He doesn't have Dakmore. He has 
you know, four cards in hand. He has he's got nothing. And then right. the next opponent goes for it, and then yeah, boom, hit him with the the O crown, hit mm -hmm. him with the back more, and then went on top of them. Dude, yeah. So you uh if you had to switch one card out, what would you think about switching out for it? It would probably be the Una's Prowler. Una's Prowler may be the cut. Okay. I know it feels wrong that sometimes, you know, it's it's better to add a discard outlet. If not that probably be the tough one. Yeah, I think that's the safest one. Probably the the Una's Prowler. I feel Maybe that. Maybe the Nature's Claim. Yeah. It's it, it's a hard. I have to go over the deck and really ball it over. <laughs> I feel it there. I, I feel it there. Yeah, that Ob that Oblivion Crown include would definitely be heat because like we talk about winning on top, being able to really just say I don't have anything and just be being like I can't stop this win con. Oh, but I can win out on top of it. So I definitely think that Oblivion Crown is definitely a great include. Um, but with that said, yeah. outside of discard outlets, are there any other like categories of cards you'd like to touch on today? Categories of cards. Uh, there's there's some cute. Uh, I would say cute. Cute is normally a derogatory term in Magic, but there's oh. definitely like, synergy cards okay. that really went on top. And so one of the best things you can do is you're going for a win. And we're talking about how it's really good to have multiple draw triggers mm -hmm. in response to an interaction. And one of the best ways of doing that is playing Reign of Filth. Gotcha. then you have all your lands have sacrifice makes mana. That's good, but also just draw trigger. And so gotcha. if you got, you know, five lands in play, that means that you have five draw triggers just ready to go. And normally gotcha. at that point, they're, they're willing to concede because they know they're not getting through. <laughs> got you five yeah, yeah. pieces <laughs> man yeah, yeah no, I, I like this i like this i like this okay 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 draw ram okay 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 i like this all right anything else you'd like to touch on bro uh i think that's that's kind of the gist of everything it's a it's a tight little deck it it knows what it wants to do mm -hmm. it's got its ramp it tutors it puts a, a big frog into play and it tries to win mm -hmm. yeah just quick look at through uh, i'm seeing a some cards we may have not got fully touched we talked about it but we have a shovel tile in ulamog the infinite we have sylvan safekeeper as a protection spell piece as well is way to sacrifice a land to make, draw a card which is different that you usually don't get um also looking through quickly we, our other shuffle titan cosmic butcher of truth and i'm also seeing one other two other cards we didn't get to touch on is allosaur shepherd being an amazing anti-counter spell for this deck and as well as the elvish reclaimer which is a way for us to search our library for a land to get the dac more salvage to get the whole combo going so man such yeah. an amazing deck i do like after all this information i feel very confident that get rog is the best og deck we got we got to we got to give it this crown give it some round get round the king but before we get into the, the gameplay i want to run some test hands by you and see how we would get to these wins that we foresee with this deck all right brother oh yeah no problem all right so i'm gonna let's say in this first pod we're going second we have a rock side going first Get Rog is you are going second. Going third is Tim Nakram. And going fourth is Anala. Okay. So our first ooh. seven we're looking at is ooh, a Mana Crypt, a Forest, Mox Diamond, Summoner's Pact, Delighted Halfling, Crosen Grip, and Golgari Grey Troll. Oh man, this this hand's great. This yeah. is this is a stellar hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So off the bat, I can tell, especially with you said we have cross and grip in hand. Yeah, we have cross and grip in hand. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so we have Rockside going next. They're always going to threaten the win at any time. Mm -hmm. Blue Farm is, you know, mid range. They they are very uh, they they know when to go. They know when to stop. When to halt. When to play. Italian just hardcore control. So this hand's really good, in my opinion, because you have. I look at the Grave Troll as a tutor for Dakmore. Gotcha. And then we have the Summer's Pact. We have a tutor for a discard outlet. Yep. So in our hand right now, we have both ways of potentially getting both cards. And then having the uh, Mana Crypt and Green Land, mm -hmm. we're able to interact early game. And, you know, most likely there's going to be one of the opponents is going to try to land a Rhystic Study. Mm-hmm. And so this is a great showing of having 
you know, turn one K grip in hand and wait for that wristic study and just probably going to be aimed more at the uh, rock side player. And if not, if they try to, you know, if they try to threaten a breach line, we can destroy the, bre the breach too, because they're not going to have any sound effects. So being able to comfortably destroy the breach and also we're a 34 land deck. So I'm not too worried about not drawing into more lands where we're pretty dense on those but yeah. i would say this is a pretty comfortable hand to keep yeah no i i agree this is a great first seven i think honestly like fuck man <laughs> it's, it, it kind of feels yeah. like we cheated at this point so let's go see a second seven uh oh, yeah. this time we'll say you're going thing. fourth just yeah. spice it up you're going fourth okay. and the first player is tnk second player is a let's say uh, the white blue heliod third player is dahada and you're going forth as the get rock monster for our first seven is okay. a nurturing peatlands uh an entomb an imperial seal a cabal ritual a veil of summer a force of vigor and a abrupt decay Ooh. this one's also pretty good too mm. this one's a with the pod it's a little a li maybe a little difficult because going forth is of course always always feels bad always yeah. hurts yeah but this this hand is really good though of course we have mana we have good lots of ramp mana we have ancient tomb uh, mm -hmm. nurturing peat land and like we card draw but it'll probably just stay a land and play mm -hmm. bill summer is always good to see in yeah. the opening hand and the abrupt decay we can't cast it at the moment, but we do have a Force of Vigor, so it is pitchable. Right. So, Dihada is a heavy Underworld Breach deck. Mm -hmm. So, if we were to put them, if they try to go for a squeeze or anyone does early game, if the table can't interact with them, we're able to interact with them. Of course, when I see Force of Vigor, I, I automatically go to uh, destroy two Ristic Studies. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> Those, right, right. It's my go through the heads. That's why I always think of first. It's probably that's not responsible to do. It's probably it's definitely better to hold it and wait for uh because the hot is definitely a combo deck. Oh, one hundred percent all day. Yeah, because we have a tutor. Um, the tutor. Well, the one bad thing about this deck, and I'll say, is that sometimes it's hard to know exactly what to tutor for. Yeah. When you're in blue, it's easy. If, if you've got you know interaction hand in a tutor that tutor is going to get ristic study mystic remora almost every time just to mm. get you further ahead so yeah. there is an argument to where you can tutor for sylvan library mm. and try to you know draw your way into more more gas you already have so much mana so right that right. could be a line that i would take mm -hmm. it's also dependent on what the what my next card is what's my eighth card let's I see drew. so if we say we keep this our eighth card would be oh you got lucky undergrowth stadium so you got the second land drop oh yeah that's even better so yeah yeah we yeah most likely we'll uh tutor for potentially we have so much mana i might just go for a one ring oh tutor for the one ring play the one ring on turn three that seems pretty good and we're holding up force of vigor for enchantment artifact interaction mm, so, in so this... that's the line we could take and kind of hold it and just kind of play the the patience play the waiting game got you because so get rock is definitely yeah it ahead. can be turbo but you have to really know your decks to play turbo uh if you're up against a turbo deck right that's its one weakness is you're very you're kind of ice cold to them going on top of you you right. at the mercy of the other players so yeah. having dihada in there puts the pressure on uh blue farm and heliod blue white to really make sure they don't go for it but also you can probably politic your way and say hey while they're going for it say i got this force of vigor try to get your way in there make sure everything's all good and then once resources have been depleted then you just you go you go ham and try to go for the combo exactly a hundred percent dude yeah yeah okay and i love the thing i love most about it is that i'm not the hugest fan of a turn three one ring but i do love the mindset of yo like I'm okay of going slower because of my seat position. I'm not playing control, 
but I recognize that my opponents are trying to win Heliod, trying to get that flip over. I believe White Blue Heliod is still an enchantment that you can destroy with the Force of Vigor. And also, Dahada, we know, are, is going for a breach line. And even TNK is still going to breach line. So it's like in your head, we have this removal. We have a tutor, so if we don't draw the first land job, we can at least guarantee that we get a JLo or an Angel, some type of thing, some type of action, or some type of draw engine to really make sure we get a game plan going. But we're not going to try to force a win at an opportune time. So I absolutely love that, man. But man, amazing, amazing deck tech, brother. Thank you for being just you, and thank you for coming and sharing with us, Devin, brother. You the man. So before we let you go and we get ready to do, get into this gameplay. Is there any closing remarks that you want to have for people and telling people why this is the best OG commander of CDH and why, honestly, they should probably give a Git Rock uh, a try for themselves? Yes, of course. So I would say to this deck is good right now because no one's playing this deck. No one, uh, well, first, no one really knows. I don't know if the, the people who did play this deck, they just kind of gave up on it. They see that there's you know, better decks, it's better to go slower and be more consistent and play blue. But whenever you play this deck, there's a good chance that maybe half your pod or even all three of your people, they don't know what to look out for. And you can really take advantage of that. And it's yeah. very close to that bruise advantage because like people know of the Gitrog monster and they know what it, you know, it's a combo deck. That's kind of the extent of their knowledge. And yeah. so when you start playing cards and doing things, and you see that you are able to take advantage of them not fully understanding when to and to not react, mm -hmm. that's whenever you know you're in a great spot. Yeah. And also again, we went over it many times, is that resiliency, it's so resilient. Yeah. Especially if you play it play it slow and keep and play smart, you can keep up really good interaction. And no matter what they do, it's just almost nearly impossible to stop this combo. For those who are interested in playing the Gitrock Monster. It is a difficult deck, I will say. Yeah. I've been playing this deck for a long time now, just about eight years. And even when I took a break from it, I still had the deck proxied out and I'd play it every once in a while and kind of dust it off. And, you know, again, played the deck for eight years. When I took a break from it, there was times whenever I would miss lines or I would do the combo and I mess up and we were playing casual, so we got to takes these backseas but yeah it was a struggle it was oh man like they i would say deck more get rock monster and outlet and they're like okay let's see if you still remember the combo yeah and then, yeah, yeah, yeah it was that like oh man i don't i don't know if i remember the combo quite well or i don't know if i can be as polished with yeah. this combo as well but uh the more reps you do with it the better you get uh the deck once you know the loops the deck comes very comfortably mm -hmm. and the loops come naturally. Once you know about, you can idea like in your mind, put draw triggers going infinite draw triggers down to zero draw triggers mm -hmm. and how the stack works and shuffling triggers and where they go. And my wife actually made some really cute tokens for me and it's four <laughs> card tokens. Two of them say draw and two say shuffle. And so whenever I play against people, this is the best like representative I give to show people where we're at in the stack. Yes. Because I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I'm lost too. I say words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or maybe yeah. they know the stack better than I do, and they I may mess up a word. I may say something out of uh, alignment. And they go, okay, yeah, that resolved, that works. And then I try to go over something and they go, that's wrong. Mm. You can't do that. And I go, oh yeah, you're right. So I made those tokens. Wow. And another last tip I would give is don't be surprised if your opponent makes you go through the loop of the Gitrock monster. Mm. It, it's again, once the way you get your deck from your graveyard deck to your hand, that's the only part that's non-deterministic. And people will say that, oh, it takes too long and you're going to go to time. And one thing I didn't go over before then that we actually talked about is that I'm an engineering major over at my university and I'm, the engineering I do is a lot of statistics based. And so whenever people say this is impossible, it takes too long. And so at my college, we run tests because we're all, you know, we're big magic nerds. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do that kind of fun stuff. And so on average, a good chunk of the time, 
without being not even playing fast, not playing loose, but you can draw your whole deck by discarding Dakmore, potentially getting a land into the graveyard to put a draw trigger, to resolving that draw trigger to draw a card and putting the Titan from your deck to the graveyard. It takes about maybe 10 minutes, which seems like a long time. And mm. it kind of is in tournament time. But just think that it's only roughly 10 minutes to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And if they have not interacted with you since then, then that means you've won the game. So right. it's 10 minutes of thinking about it, getting the deck into your hand. Once we're all good there, then you're good to go. And then you can just think about your loops, draw triggers, all the combo stuff and good and good stuff. But yes, people will test you. There was a... Uh, my first time winning with this deck, I was playing my friends beforehand. And so when I go get rock deck more, that's where I let they go, yep, we lose and we scoop it up and call it a call the game. We're done. Right. But there it's like, no, do the combo. Yeah. We need to make sure that you know what you're doing. And whenever exactly. they say that, it's very menacing at first. And it's very easy to get flustered. Yeah. So expect that. Don't let it get to you. And also up can play smart and place play not slow play but keep it you know don't rush yourself uh, one of my favorite yeah. content creators who plays legacy and now more cdh is bosh and roll brian mm -hmm. koval and he talked about how in one of his cdh tournaments first game he was up against the gerog monster and he was like very pleasantly surprised like oh people are still playing this deck yeah and turn three gerog went for a win mm. and in tournaments the best your best chance of survival at this point is making your opponents do the combo and just hoping they mess up because yep. it's a tournament it's you know you we all know how it goes like you know kitchen table magic you you mess up your point your fan your friends go it's okay it's whatever we see what you try to do you win the game but there it's you got prize support on the line so it's right that's your best bet and so he was going for it and the table agreed and said okay we're going to make you do the whole combo and apparently this person was flustered and made a mistake, and I talked about before earlier about putting draw triggers on the stack. They put too many on the stack oh. and resolved them manually. And he lost the game because he drew to an empty deck instead of learn like controlling the draw triggers. No, I'm so, so sorry. The combo brother. was right Damn. there in their hands and they lost. So it it is menacing when they say do it, but it's to be expected and yeah. you know gold fishing by yourself i was just about to say that brother i was just like you got a goldfish brother you got a goldfish man you got a goldfish you have to write a primer goldfish that combo make muscle memory yes put yourself under that pressure you just that's yes. the best way you can learn from this one billion percent man oh my gosh like if if i could just say you just hit though that the, what you just said at the very end there is so important and so powerful gold fishing write your own primers even if you don't plan on having like the top list online write the primers because it te it helps you better know your own list and my last thing i'd ask if i could add on to what devin is saying is play around with the tags one thing i do with all my lists is i tag everything so i better know what the cards are on my list and so if you click here and you can just change the what is it uh let's see i can't change the tags but if you click the triple dots if it was your own list you can it's something called change tags the list and you can categorize each of your lists so similar to what this deck tech you can say oh these are all my win cons these are my outlets these are my tutors and whatever not and so now when you're going through your list and you have that oh i have one land and imperial seal what would i get you now have a better understanding of your deck and all the categories of your deck and so if you're saying i have everything i need i need i just need a ramp piece now your head can go what are my ramp pieces you know what i'm saying or what is this so man Devin, Absolutely. very well said very well said brother yeah man but yeah thank you brother for coming on i appreciate you and i honor you and i'm looking forward to this gameplay brother and i want to say to the audience thank you all so much uh I just I, I really want to say thank you all for interacting like i'm not gonna like lie you all asked a lot of amazing questions if you're on youtube make sure you ask them questions right now so we can get devin to just answer any questions that you all have and so i want to say once again devin thank you brother for coming brother absolutely is there any uh, any last minute question before we get to the games from anyone in in the chat uh not that i'm fully seeing i, I see a lot of cosigns to the uh uh not like we have peacecraft saying uh 
Let's see. Peace Scrap, drop your question one more time, brother. Ah, very good question. So we have Peacecraft asking, why should they not play Thali and the Gitrog monster or over the new? Um, oh, yeah. Why not play oh, Thali and the Gitrog monster over the old Gitrog? So that is a great question. Um, the short, short answer of it is that those two, they do do the kind of same thing where it's uh, land goes to graveyard or sack a land draw card. Right. But the Thali and the Gitrock monster is more like a stacks piece mm. than a combo engine. Got you. I believe uh, my friend, he does, he plays this deck a whole bunch yeah. and he, he loves it, but he's also, he's a mid range stacks creature based player. Mm -hmm. So he plays Thali and the Gitrock monster, but he plays it more as a Death and taxes, attack the mana base, attack the creatures, make it really awkward for your opponents, and just beat them with the frog. Yeah. And that Gearrock monster, if I remember, it has like, there's so much text on that on that card. No, 100%. It's got first strike and death touch. It has a Thalia side where it's like creatures and non land, non base lands come into play tapped. And then the Gitrock side of it is on attack trigger mm -hmm. you may sacrifice a creature or a land right if you do draw a card so you do get that draw trigger but you you don't have that that clause of uh whenever a land is the graveyard draw a card so that makes 100 yes sense you can draw sense, a card yeah. but you don't get to abuse it and got you draw a whole bunch of cards you just get that once per turn that makes 100 percent sense and we uh the uh peacecraft also asked so that makes sense for the get uh the get the folly and the get rock monster but they also asked about the new get rock i know know if you've seen this with the get rock ravenous ride uh, it says trampling haste six five for three colors and a black and a green whenever the get rock ravenous ride deals combat damage to a player you may sacrifice a creature or that saddle it this turn if you do draw x cards then put X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is the sacrifice creature's power, power and that's saddle one, which I have no idea what the fuck saddle does. Uh, they, they don't have any to have. Quarters. I think it's kind of like, uh, it's like crewing, but creatures. So it's like what? crewing for creatures. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> if I remember right, I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Okay. Okay. Peace Christ says it's crew. All right. All right I'm good. I, we, we know what crew is. Okay. So is there a reason that this yeah. one that uh, we will lean towards this one over uh, the, the OG Get Rock? Are we still the same reason? Uh, it's not really comboing off as well as the old Get Rock monster allows us to do. Yeah, it's it's still that same clause. Still good. Uh, you do, you know, you get a short burst of drawing a whole bunch of cards. Yeah. But yeah, everything being the new Get Rogs, if you will, being on attack trigger something draw a card or draw cards is good but you look to do that once per turn unless there's some there's probably some loop in there where you can really abuse it and take extra combats but yeah. that might be really hard in black and green so yeah it is good yeah you do get to draw cards but yeah just have the ability on normal get rock to just land enter the graveyard draw a card rinse and repeat it, it's hard to beat that no i hear that and we got one more. We got D Mage asking, uh, what about time over Get Rock? It's a similar a similarity in resilience and uninteractable graveyard combo deck. Is there a reason that uh is there a mindset that people should think about, like, hey, where they will want to lean on one versus the other? So before I played Get Rock and after that whole creature debacle combo finding my deck I want to play, uh, yeah. I was playing Tayo. Really? And I do like Tayo. Okay. Tayum's awesome. Okay. The problem I had with Tayum is that it's so hard to be um, reactive. Mm. You, you're playing DNT, you know, you're playing, you know, Abzan good creatures, but also a lot of your creatures aren't that good on their own. Like mm. a good example of this is a Kantian uh, money changer. Yeah. Card is really good with Tayum in play. Other than that, the card is utter garbage. It is so <laughs> bad. If, yeah. If you don't have Tyum, that card does nothing. And there's a whole bunch of those. Right. And I, I was able to get a few wins, but there's times whenever 
my board has so many creatures in play and I have to remember what's stopping what who's trying to do what and mm. how can I win right now because the Tyam deck isn't exactly as black and white because Gearrug is it's easy in the sense of Discord Outlet, Dakamore do one of three things win the game mm. but Tyam is what line will win you the game is there something in play that's stopping you that you can go around and instead of the option of just kill the thing combo off you have to combo around the thing or try to find that line mm. and so i fully agree i think in my opinion that uh, time is way harder to play than get mm. that could be some bias because i played get for like eight years right 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 but playing time it's a cool deck i love the deck and i respect it and when i was playing other decks and i was facing time i typically do kill the Tyam player first <laughs> depending on who else is there only because i know what their deck is capable of and right, right that right. deck really can come back from nothing mm, which is really yeah. scary yeah i hear you i hear you so, so if it's I, really good at so if i'm what i'm hearing is basically it, threatening a win and yeah. everything it's it's a great deck it what for your reason you would still recommend the og get rock over time purely because of the skill gap it may take to really master it is that what, what i'm hearing right and also they're also just you are they're two combo decks but one is heavily based death and taxes so you know you have the really really good um uh ability to turn one a rule of law effect which is really good in cedh if you're going first and you slam down a rule of law on turn one there's a good chance you probably just won the game depending mm. on the the decks you're facing right so that was right, a, right. a good plus in that deck gotcha. yeah the deck is primarily play a hate bear or a piece and you also have to play the death and taxa side of cdh which is really hard because you have to look at your hand look at your opponent's decks okay think okay will these cards stop my opponents if they if they do how well can they go around it mm. am i Am I cold to a bow masters? Am I cold to removal? Is someone just going to just ignore it and then right. I get got by something? Yeah. Who, if I get to choose only one of these things put into play on turn one, who am I trying to stop? Yeah. And so there's a whole lot of those decisions, which is really difficult. Mm, but gotcha, definitely gotcha. still a good deck. Yeah. I hear that. So I, I would definitely say to the audience then, I th what I'm hearing basically, no matter which you choose, whether it be the OG, uh, Git Rock, the Dali and the Git Rock Monster, or the new Git Rock, or even at time, you have to really look at yourself, not the deck. You need to look at what fits your play style. Are you more, I'm trying to win and combo off? Then the OG Git Rock may be the best. Am I really trying to stack the table out, but also, but in a specific way, just will cucking creatures and uh, what is it called? And lands entering the tapped? Then maybe Thali and the Get Rock Monster maybe your maybe your uh maybe your stew. When it comes to maybe I want to try something new that no one's ever created before, maybe the new new Get Rock is a good thing. But then if you're saying okay maybe I like you're more of like I want to play stacks and I want to be able to win at instant speed without casting spells, but and I'm willing to put in the work because I'm not gonna lie, time is not gonna be an easy deck to learn, but I'm willing to put in the work to master this deck then time may be, may be, uh, may be a thing. Cause the biggest thing I've noticed from talking with Devin from the difference between time and get rock and difficulty in learning is the get rock playing the deck isn't hard. It's do you know how to do the get rock combo is the hard part. And what I noticed with time pilots, it's not just doing the combo that may be difficult. It's getting to the combo because when you're in a turbo meta or even a mid range meta where you're not running blue, so you don't have counter magic and you don't have the Ristic and Mystic to draw cards, you have to have a very well understand, a very good understanding of what your deck does, how other decks interact with your deck and knowing when to do it. So you, it's really not like, the biggest thing I could take away that I will really say if you all could take away from anything is it's not which deck is better, is what fits who you are better. So 
yeah but with that said i want to get into this gameplay better so brother so i want to say man be like you all are amazing thank you to the audience on youtube and on twitch and thank you so much Devin, for coming in again i want to say hey y'all if you're looking for more ways to support the show bro we have a plethora of ways starting off with first of all our thunder conductor merch i'm wearing it right now i go cap this is the spot the softest smoothest merch i ever wore in my life i ain't leaving home without it anymore we also have our thunder conductor proxies my way to increase access to this amazing format i call cdh we have everything from our premium paperback to our deluxe card stock check out link in the bio and we also have our thunder conductor community check us out on discord but if you want to support us on patreon to get everything from shouts in the stream exclusive q a's and also get your chance to have your deck Ch uh, checked out on the stream check us out on patreon i want to say a big shout out to scott mitchell part of our mono red tier patron he is amazing he keeps the lights on in a way that he, he couldn't even imagine and very lastly you say at i don't want to join a patreon i don't want no merch and i don't want no proxies but i really love the stream and i want to say one time for the fun time i want to support you no problem link in the bio buy me a coffee it keeps the lights on it keeps me up but with that being said y'all be great i'll see y'all soon in this get rog monster best og commander gameplay peace <laughs>